Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's time for a little early coffee and cursey words because we are still following the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. Today is day nine. There is a remote witness that will be taking the stand. Not sure who it is. I'm kind of hoping it's one of the officers that responded to the Depp residence when Amber Heard called the police, though she's saying she didn't, or at least in Johnny Depp's testimony yesterday, we heard audio where she indicated she didn't call the police. Her friend, um, Johnny Depp said, was the one who called the police. Who knows? We'll see. But we do have a few more witnesses to go for Johnny Depp. Quick recap from yesterday and a huge welcome to all the law nerds, a huge thank you to the moderators who are keeping these streams going as we are here for hours and hours and hours of things. But today we're going to see more witnesses from Johnny Depp's side. And just as a reminder for everyone, we are in Johnny Depp's case. This is his case in chief where he has to prove the defamation that he's alleging against Amber Heard. The witnesses are going to be very beneficial to him, or at least they should be. They should be coming in to give certain little snippets of testimony that is necessary to help his case. We will see Amber Heard's case after they rest and you will know it happens. It will happen in court. It will be, you know, the plaintiff rests their case. No more witnesses for them to prove their case. And then Amber Heard's team will start calling witnesses and doing the direct examination. We will not see Amber Heard testify, I don't think, until her case. Could Johnny Depp's team call her? Yes. Do I think that's likely? No, I don't. Um, so we are going to have another day with some witnesses, not quite sure what's coming up and happy that I'm not quite sure what's coming up. Isn't it nice to just be like, what are we seeing today, friends? I mean, I'm not the lawyer who has to prep everything. So I'm just along for the ride with y'all. For all of you that are new, we have compassionate conversation in the chat. We're here to talk about the way that the law acts and see what the jury is seeing. Yes, we are blessed in the chat to have a lot more information than this jury has at this point, but we need to keep an eye on what the jury is hearing so that by the time we get to verdict, we can parse the difference between what the jury knows and what we in the general public know, because those are going to be two different things. So when we talk about something like the Milani makeup or whatever, we know that but the jury doesn't know anything about that yet. So I'm also trying to keep an eye and remind everyone that that's where we are. So we have a lot going on. I cannot wait to cover this live through lunch today, and then I will send you over all around LawTube to go find your afternoon coverage as I hop on a plane to a live conference. <laughs> We have things we have to do. So let us find what's going on around the interwebs. I'm going to roll the intro. We're going to go over and see if court is getting started. And we're going to look for one that's got all the things. We're going to look for, we're going to look for closed captioning and an audio feed. And I'm going to roll the intro before the judge and the jury comes into court because they should be starting right on time. It seemed the court reporter was stuck in traffic yesterday is what happened. And for the youtube things, don't forget to like and subscribe. The live trial coverage is a unique thing when these big trials happen. I cover court cases in pop culture. It's what we do over here. Let's roll. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. So let us share our screen because we are professionals here. And just for everyone who is new, we will try to timestamp the witnesses. And when we go to direct examination and cross-examination, and again, direct examination is the lawyers that called the witness, the lawyers who got the witness into court and asked them to come up and say shit. That is the direct examining lawyer. The lawyer who asked the kind of more peppering questions or sometimes the more aggressive <laughs> questions, the leading questions, that is the opposing side on cross-examination. Then you see a redirect, which gives the attorneys that called the witness a time to kind of go back and fix any holes that were poked into that witness or their story or what have you. It looks like the judge is coming into the courtroom. Appropriate that everyone's standing. Amber Heard today is in white. And uh, maybe we are getting those police officers today because 
we're trying to look, um, you know, I don't hear you, Your Honor. Oh, uh, user error, Emily, user error. Get yourself live. And they're approaching the bench immediately. Oh, what happened overnight, I wonder. But we had, you know, back to white today. We'll see which attorney is up first. I don't know what, you know, umbrage here is bringing to the court's attention, but it is 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock on the dot. And this judge is ready to roll. I have no idea what they're approaching about, but we will see. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to drink our water and stay hydrated. Depp is kind of given a look it, this is where the jury's sitting over here. So I don't know if he's looking at the jury to see what they're up to. Um, but he can't hear what's going on up at the bench. Oh my God. I see you guys in the chat saying bench now, for those of you that weren't following along yesterday, there was this audio where Amber Heard is yelling couch couch and i'm sitting here giving commentary going pivot pivot it was very odd because we had no context for it if we knew why she was yelling couch then maybe we would you know understand so i don't know if they were talking about getting this remote witness ready to go or what but let's see what the judge says and then i'm going to try to find a, a feed with closed caption the daily mail doesn't have closed captioning on their feed so uh oh her face looks woeful What's going on? You guys, something is happening. What is happening? What is happening? Is she just counting the jurors as they're coming in? Her face looked very, um, very stern. Oh, thank you, Dr. B coming in with the coffee, coming in clutch. Thank you so much. The stream says, what's going on? They know I need coffee. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. No, they've just been, I distracted them with my hair. I heat styled it. So nobody noticed I'm uncaffeinated. <laughs> Good morning, Your Honor. Um, plaintiff calls Tara okay. Roberts. All right. All right. Tara Roberts. And this is a new attorney for the DEP team uh, that we haven't seen before. I feel like we're announcing basketball. They've got so many fucking attorneys in the rotation. It's like, and for the plaintiff, we have number 12. Miss Roberts, can you hear me? Ah. Uh, so. Technology. If I was the judge, I would be hesitant about remote witnesses too. It's very odd. It doesn't happen. Can you hear me, Ms. Court. Roberts? This would annoy the shit out of me if I was the judge. I wouldn't want to do this either today. Yeah. Here's here's the face. Ms. Roberts. Um I can see you. Galactic Cat Queen, not all countries stream court proceedings. Mm -hmm. Not all countries have court proceedings that are open to the mm -hmm. public like the U.S. does. We are a odd gladiator sport mm -hmm. kind of a country. I'll have to do a video on the founding. See of if she's on mute or not. The founding. <laughs> unmute. Unmute. Um, with regard to the founding of our legal system and, and how it was, you know, to our systems kind of branched out of the European system, out of the English system, and public trials were one of the big... Mm -hmm features that the founders wanted to make sure that people weren't essentially just getting accused and then could never face their accuser, um, didn't have a public trial. The person who was on trial wasn't able to see who was accusing them and what they were saying. So our legal system has a foundation in public trials. Can you hear me, Mr. Roberts? Did you see Chu? Yes, I ben can. Ben Chu was like, okay. yes. Can you raise your right hand for me? It worked. Do you swear or firm tell the truth under penalty of law? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Mary. Yeah, she was supposed to be set up 20 minutes ago, but she could have been on mute and nervous. It's a lot. She could have been on mute and nervous. This is a hard case. This is, I mean, I wouldn't want to be a witness you in this. Can't see her on the big screen. In this case, and that's a courtroom tech issue. Look, the amount of courtroom tech issues I dealt with, I helped run a lot of the tech during the Lindsay Lohan, um, like the second or third preliminary hearing. It was so difficult. Mr. Chu's like, please stop pushing the button. Don't push the button. But it's hard. Court tech issues are difficult. Courts are not always tech savvy. Judges are not tech savvy. And most lawyers are not super tech savvy. Those of us that love tech are um, more of an anomaly. Thank you, Jody K. I appreciate it. We had to, we had to get it ready to go. So I just, I am not surprised that this is, even though she was supposed to be logged in 20 minutes ago, they still can't get her up on the big screen for the jury to see. I'm not surprised at all. Question, how do courts have a person for every little task, but no exclusive tech person to help legal heads juggle? They, most courts don't have a person for every single task. They have, 
they generally have one tech person for the courthouse, depending on the courthouse, but they have a court reporter, a bailiff, and a clerk, and the judge. Go ahead and ask your question. Sometimes a judicial assistant. It's the best we're going to do right now. Okay. Um, it's the best we're going to do right now. Good morning. Would you good please enough. state your name for the, the record? Judge. Tarly Roberts. She's Ms. Judge. Roberts, how do you know Johnny Depp? I manage his island in the Exuma Keys in the Bahamas for the past 15 uh, years. That's what we're getting into. The Bahamas Ms. and the Roberts, detox. Where do you live? In the Bahamas. I live on I live on the island and I have a home in Nassau and in Long Island, the Bahamas, which I try to get to as frequently as possible. Can you please describe Mr. Depp's private island generally? Um, white sand my duties on the private island no, would be to um, maintain the island, the buildings, the houses, logistics, not included or limited to um, provisioning fuel, uh, gas, groceries, um, just day-to-day -day operations, staff, um, and uh, kind of like an estate just in the middle of nowhere. I want people to see okay. her. Um, your Honor, I would like to pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 49, which has previously been submitted into evidence. Okay. I like how clear this attorney is. She's so far concise. So, the caretaker from the private island, um, there was some um, horribleness when Johnny Detox Gibson, there. Gibson, if you could play this, and um, Your Honor, if we could publish this to the jury. Is it audio? Oh, it's video. We have video. I haven't seen this before. I wonder if this is just a walkthrough of the house on the island. I have questions. Oh, sorry, y'all. That's my fault. I don't know what happened. Thank you. We can take that down. Um, Ms. Roberts, do you recognize what is shown in that video? Sorry. Yes, that's Johnny's house on the island. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Gibson, can you please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 348? It was a kind of a 360 of the island. And this hasn't been seen into evidence yet, so let's first just play that for Ms. Roberts. Mm -hmm. Ben King was not the caretaker of the island. And an audio? Ms. Roberts, um, do you recognize what is shown in that video? I didn't see a video. Yeah, that's his house and, and uh, closet area. There was no video for okay. us, but okay. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to plaintiff moves to admit this into evidence. No All right, 348 in evidence. Do you wish to have it published? Yes, can we please publish okay. that to the jury? And Mr. Gibson, once it's published, if you could play that again. Oh, that's why they didn't publish it because it hadn't been established yet. Oh, okay. Johnny Depp's, that's the entire house in the Bahamas. A bed, a TV, a couch, a closet. And Ms. Roberts, what is that doorway with the beads um, that was just shown in that video? That's the entrance to the closet. Okay, thank you. We can take that down. The beads, are, house. The beads are iconic. Thank you. Ms. Roberts, I believe you mentioned that you manage staff on the island. How many people work with you on the island? Uh, myself and, and three others is uh, Jason Major, goes by CJ, mm -hmm. Stephen Farrow, and Rico Major. Is this, uh, I believe the witness is not being shown to the jury right now. And that's good of the that lawyer to catch. Sense. The jury needs to be able to see her. Thank you. Because they need to be able to establish credibility. They need to us. know. There you go. Thank you. Ms. Roberts, how are you compensated for your work on the island? I receive a monthly salary. Other than this monthly salary, what other sources of income do you have? Um, I get uh, dividends and yeah, rental from family iconic. properties and businesses that we have. Since you've been working for Mr. Depp, how often have you seen him? Thank you. Um, on average, uh, two, three times a year. Sometimes it was longer. 
um, more visits. She Sometimes was visible to us. see him for a period of time, depending on what she his was schedule not visible was or in what was courtroom. happening on the island. And how would you describe your interactions with Mr. Depp? Um, the island was a very family atmosphere, uh, dinners together. He was very social, um, funny, humorous, uh, very kind with all of us and uh, very, very outgoing. I'm not surprised I by enjoyed that. enjoyed working with him and for him. We've heard that from everyone who's spoken. When you first started working on Mr. Depp's Island, who would come down to the island? Um, it, at the beginning, it was um, Vanessa and the children. Ob objection. Um, when he started relevance. Right. Oh, hold on a minute, ma'am. Objection. Relevance. Is uh, that Umbridge? To, um, just Miss Roberts' knowledge of who came no. down to the island. You, you have, have to have forward. a better. Okay. You have to have a better um, explanation when you are arguing. Uh, Miss Roberts, injection. um, when, well, Miss Roberts, are you aware if Mr. Depp brought, or how often did Mr. Depp bring guests with him to the island? Um, he had, uh, guests, he would bring Amber and, and Amber with her friends. And also I had on one of the occasions I had Paul Bettany and his wife and his children here. We heard about that yesterday. On, on one of the trips. Where Amber Heard made Paul Bettany's And when did the Bettany's come down cry. to the island? Um, sometime in the summer of July, 2013. What happened when the Bettany's came down? Oh, are we going to get into that fight? Um, it was a, a normal trip. I just, I, we had an incident where I was asked to, um, have Amber leave the island. I scheduled a flight for her to leave, to go to Florida that morning. And then that afternoon I was told to, um, bring her back and I arranged for a flight for her to come back that afternoon to the island. Send her away. Bring her back. When did you first Very meet Miss I believe it was shortly after they started dating. What was your impression of Miss Heard when you first met her? Objection. Oh, they were very much in love. Relevance. Uh, yep. I'll oh, oh, okay, I'll good. Withdraw. I'll withdraw. They Next seemed question. very in love. This is who's going to be doing the cross-examination. I think Miss Bradhoff has drawn her objection. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so uh, Ms. Roberts, you She's can answer. What was, your first, what was your impression of Ms. Heard when you first met her? Oh, they were very nice, a couple in love. They, She cooked for him, uh, cleaned up. They took care of each other. They were a very happy couple. All right, I'm going to look for a few When, if at all, did that change? Um, with each visit, it, 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 it changed um, more of... Um, it was more not uh, like an just, island life anymore. It was more of um, wines and and more more requests, uh, simple things, toiletries uh, to have things here in place before um, they came or she came as well. Um, so it you know luggage changed. We got more and more luggage on average and every day. Things evolved. Um, taking of, meals, cleaning houses. There we go. Um, sometimes more. And how often would Miss Heard come down to the island? Less island life. Um, the, at the beginning, probably the same two or three times a year, um, sometimes three times with her friends and family and, and, and Johnny. During your interactions with Ms. Hurd, what, if any, changes did you observe of Ms. Hurd? Back to the braids today. Um, the the taking care of the cooking the meals, we, had, we then had a chef come to cook. Um, it was more of um, it was more of a, a formal island um, with chefs and housekeepers and things like that. Um, Is she trying changed, to talk about some diva shit? Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much that. Miss Roberts, were you Thank on the you. island in August 2014 for Mr. Depp's detox? Yes, I was. Who else was on the island? Um, I flew to Nassau and, and met um, Johnny. Amber and Deb. I brought them, flew them back to the island, and then a couple of. Oh, Miss Roberts, I believe you froze there for a second. Um, I heard you say Johnny, Amber, and Deb, and then you were cut off for a second. A, a couple of days into, a couple of days later, Dr. Kipper arrived. Okay. Well, she does have someone doing her hair every day, I think. <laughs> And thank you, chat, for keeping everybody just popping um, in. What do you recall about that time Surprised. that Mr. Depp came down to the island in August 2014? 
um, that he, he was going to be here. They were going to be here for extended period of time, at least a, a month or longer. Um, and so we provisioned for a month for, for the trip. Um, and after about a week or two, um, they left. Where was Mr. Depp staying for the detox? In, in his house. Is that the same house that was just shown in those videos earlier? Yes, it was. How often would you see Mr. Depp when he was on the island for the detox? Um, I was every day, but not um, face to face, um, just from delivering um, some re replenishing the house, delivering uh, supplies, orders, and things like that, linens, and, and changing things out. So glimpsing him, not not a conversation as it used to be. How was Mr. Depp when you saw him? Uh, he was always asleep on the couch. While well, he was detoxing. I mean, you know. While Ms. Heard was on the island for the detox, what, if any, injuries did you observe on Ms. Heard? Because again... I didn't, I didn't see anything. Depp's putting on his case in chief, but also a defense After Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard left the island, what happened next? Um, we would go into the house and, and uh, break it down, uh, empty out the refrigerators, change the linens, collect the laundry, straighten the house back up again. Okay. After they left, um, what, if any, property damage did you observe? There wasn't any. Okay. Ms. Roberts, to what extent were you involved in Mr. Depp and Mrs. Hurd's wedding in February 2015 on the island? Um, pretty much all aspects of it, uh, logistics, uh, work permits, getting things set up onto the island, uh, to the island staff, making um, sure it didn't turn into fire fest, um, building of the, the tents and, and, uh, organizing transportation of, of guests to and from the island. Jesus, that's a lot of work. When did you first hear that Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard were getting married on the island? Objection calls for hearsay and relevance. What's the relevance of when she heard? How did you learn? I, oh, I can move on. Okay, next bang. question. Um, what Thanks communications, everybody. if any, did you have with Miss Heard about the wedding? There we go. You get the same thing. Um, I, we were given um, uh, uh, information on a, a schedule um, to better help me uh, schedule. Does it have dinner, dancing, and drugs on the schedule? Um, on the island, like the LA wedding? And, and food and, and things like that. Um, we were given a, a schedule for um, daily um, things were going to uh, happen each day. Um, what time foods were, when people were coming in, how many people would be at meals, just so we I had a better idea of, of planning of what was happening. Um, it was detailed. Um, it was what was happening each day um, on, and then it was uh, the rehearsal night and there would be, you know, we had scheduled, it would be dinner, dancing, drugs, drugs. music, yes! and the wedding. Dinner, people dancing, were, drugs, um, it happened, bingo. Conscious about doing the wedding, the next day we were doing the wedding, um, the ceremony and we were specific on time. Privacy was very important. Um, we were very careful of people taking pictures. I think everybody was given, um, Instructions. cameras and, and asked not to take pictures. Um, I was concerned about that also, but we were doing the um, ceremony at uh, sunset. So there really wouldn't be an uh, issue with um, leaking what paparazzi people and things like that. And um, shortly when the ceremony was about to happen, it actually happened earlier than it was um, scheduled the bridal party and, and Amber showed up early and we were still scrambling for flowers and setting up and, and getting beverages and um, snacks down there. And there was a plane circling overhead and um, it would just huh. kept on circling and circling and, and taking pictures and, and the ceremony proceeded earlier than um, was scheduled. Is, sh is that indicating to you guys that Amber Did wanted you observe Mr. it to Depp be observed? Did you observe Mr. Depp drinking alcohol at the wedding? What do you objection think? Objection leading. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Um, Calls for a yes or no answer. But it's not technically Ms. Roberts, as part of the provisioning for the wedding, did you um, 
order alcohol for the wedding? Objection leading. Sustained. Okay. What did you order for the wedding? Ms. Roberts, what did you order for the wedding in February 2015? Um, I, was, I was given a list of uh, food. Um, I was given a list of beverages for wines, champagnes. I was asked to um, have Dr. Pepper and um, sugar-free Red Bull here because at that time that was what um, Mr. Depp or Johnny was uh, drinking was Dr. Pepper and sugar-free Red Bull. And the reason I ask about um, did you observe Miss Hurd drinking alcohol? Because it wedding? matters. That's also Objection. leading, leading, sustained. Who did you observe drinking alcohol at the there wedding? There we go. Um, pretty much everybody was 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 drinking and and doing shots and celebrating. It was it was a, a party. Uh, Ms. Roberts, I'd like to discuss with you when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were on the island in December 2015. Who came down to the island with them? Um, I flew to Nassau um, to meet them, which is what I normally do. Um, I meet he, himself. Were you saying I need them to have like an under deck TV island, show? I fly to Nassau to meet them just to make sure that the transition is smooth with customs and immigration. Um, so I flew to Nassau and I met um, this feels Johnny like Amber, fast, his children better. and a friend of, their, of, of the children. And, I do, I just haven't um, had time load the luggage onto the caravan plane and we boarded the plane and, and, and came to the island. Um, and a couple days into the trip, um, Alice and Greg and Alice's three children and a nanny um, came to the island as well. Yes, DP. Ben was the Who house manager Alice in Australia. Greg? She's the island manager in the Bahamas. Alice is a clothes designer and Greg was her partner and I, I believe he's a photographer that's what i'm wondering when did you first interact with miss hurd when she came to the island in december 2015. Um, at the airport when i flew to nassau to meet to meet everybody usually when they come down off the plane you know there's hugs and kisses and chatting for a couple minutes while the luggage is transferred how close were you to miss hurd close hug close hug kiss you know, how are you? How hard did you kiss her on the cheek? Everybody. Oh, we're going to get into that. How hard? So face to face, cheek to cheek. On cross from Umbridge. What, if any, makeup did you observe Miss Heard wearing when you first interacted with her? I, do, I don't recall um, if she was or was not wearing makeup. Um, she, she, if she wore makeup, it was very natural. Um, I, I don't think often she wore makeup on the island. Um, I, I I don't recall her wearing That's makeup. That's important. And you wouldn't in that way. What, weather. if any, injuries did you notice on Miss Heard? I didn't notice any. Miss Roberts, you mentioned that Gregory, a photographer, came to the island during that time. Um, how often did you observe Gregory on the island? Um, I interacted every day because uh, meals went down and, 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 and changing the sheets and cleaning the, the room. Um, so I, I, I see everybody every day um, there. And when you saw him, what was he doing? Um, the, they were doing, there was a photo shoot on the island. Thank you. Um, Amber was wearing the clothes, Amber was wearing Alice's clothes and they were doing a photo shoot on the beach um, and Greg was taking the pictures. What, if anything, do you remember about that particular time that Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd came down to the island? Um, we had a, there was a incident between Johnny and Amber here during that trip. Okay, that gave a good foundation. Can you incident? describe the incident? Yep, gave a good foundation. Um, I, on the evening, we kind of called it a night, dinner was finished. Uh, we wrapped everything up down here at the staff area in the kitchen. Um, myself and CJ um, came to the office uh, later on that evening and Johnny was um, in the office up here um, and he was agitated, kind of walking back and forth. I'd asked him if he needed anything because I, figured, I wasn't sure why, if he was up here to get something or was looking for something, which wouldn't be unusual for people to come up here. Um, so he was here, talked for a couple minutes, the three of us, and a couple minutes later, um, Amber 
um, he ASMR came into Nathan, the, into I love the that. office with um, happy provisioning into the office, and we were the three of us were in the office, and, and Amber came in, and she was asking him to uh, tell him to come back to the house. Um, Please come back. I'm sorry. Come back. Um, and uh, he stood stood here, reluctant to go. Um, didn't want to go. And um, a little like exchange a back and forth. Um, he le left the office and got into his vehicle and started it up. And Amber went outside and stood in front of the vehicle um, so that he couldn't didn't leave. drive away. She was standing. In, Amber was standing in front of it. And um, again, it was she was asking him to don't leave. I'm sorry. Come back to the house. After a couple minutes, um, she got in the vehicle and they left to go up back to their house. What happened after they went back up to the house? Um, CJ and they I fight. Were still he in tries the to leave. And, she tries um, to stop him. Weren't really sure decided that maybe it would be best if we just drove up there just to make sure that um, everything was okay. And um, so we got in the golf cart and we drove up to their house, um, got into the parking lot and the, his vehicle was in the parking lot and um, you could hear them, in, you can hear them inside, the, you could hear inside the house uh, yelling um, her, her Amber yelling and, and Johnny answering back, and you could really hear what was being said. Sam is a um, We stood there for a couple minutes, uh, CJ and myself, and then um, then you started to hear. Um, it became audible. Um, Amber was telling him that he was a, a washed-up actor. Um, he was going to die a lonely, a fat, lonely old man. Then you heard, uh, you hit me with a can. You heard Johnny say, you hit me with a can. And then he came down the steps and Amber was behind him. And she had a uh, bottle fast. in her hand, was removed. And there was a, a brief pause at the moment. Uh, I think of initial shock or, or uh, uncertainty of why, you know, that we were there. I, they need, neither Johnny nor Amber knew that we were there. Um, he proceeded to uh, walk back to the John Deere and um, she again walked, he was sitting in the seat, he, Amber came up to him and was asking him to come back in the house that she was sorry, please come back in the house. Um, and uh, he, he didn't come out of the seat and she was hugging and kissing him and I love you, I love you. She was telling him I loved you. Um, he didn't react, Johnny sat there. Um, eventually uh, got out of the John Deere um, and proceeded to start to walk away. At that time, Amber started to grab at him and his shirt and, and, and trying to pull him back to the house, um, just basically viciously trying to pull him back and, and get him back to the house and, and, and yelling at him. And at that point, I, I was between them and uh, felt it was – best and I was getting worried about what was going to happen and it was best that um, I remove him from the situation and so um, CJ took Amber back to the house and I walked Johnny over to the cafe which was basically 30 seconds away from, from the house because it was the only place I could take him to at the time. This is new testimony. And We've heard you about this, that Ms. Heard but was not from anyone who witnessed trying it. To pull Mr. Depp back. Good Can you follow explain up. what you mean by that? Good follow up. Ask following um, up on define vicious. It, it was Dial like it clawing, in. grabbing his clothes, grabbing his hair, trying to like pull him back. Uh, She's like, like angry. clawing. Like he was leaving and come back. He couldn't leave in the vehicle because the keys had been taken out. So there was there wasn't a way for Johnny to drive away. The only way was for him to, to walk, for him to walk away, and um, it uh, wasn't um, a pleasant situation of, of wanting him to to not so leave stressful. and um, angry and yelling and, and just yelling, you know, come back, come back, don't leave. Um, this is like the that. pattern we keep hearing about. At any point, did witnesses. Mr. Depp um, he hit tries or to leave? Objection, leading. All right, I'll see That's the objection. Fair. Ms. Roberts, um, did Mr. how did Mr. Talley? Depp react to yep. Ms. Heard viciously grabbing him? I have a thought about the leading he, he questions. Didn't. Uh, he stood there with his arms by his side and um, 
he, he, he didn't do anything. Okay. Ms. Roberts, when you were back in the cafe with Mr. Depp, what happened next? What happened um, next is clutch. I was concerned because uh, he, I had heard him objection, say that he'd gone. Objection to her being concerned. That's not uh, I'll sustain as to concerned, all right? It's okay, Ms. Roberts, without <sighs> testifying no, 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 as no, how no, you no. felt, um, what Ask did you how she felt when you went back to the cafe? She's Mr. allowed Depp. to testify as to how she felt. It was I, a concerning well, situation. Cafe, oh, my God. He had a mark across the bridge of his nose. Um, I got a bag of ice to put on his uh, on it so that it wouldn't swell um, this is when he got hit with the mineral spirits with the and cane. i he walked over to the love seat at the cafe and he laid down and um, went to sleep and cj came back over and um i asked cj to stay there for the remainder of the evening for the remainder of the morning um and i left cj inside the cafe and i left johnny on the couch when did you next see Miss Heard? That that morning, I, I saw I saw her that morning. How close were you to Miss Heard when you interacted with her the next morning? Uh, conversation um, in in a couple feet away. When you saw her, how did she appear? You are allowed to testify when it's relevant to explain your actions, um, what happened. They had guests leaving and- uh, This is how this judge was, rules. Uh, kind of a, no a normal morning. Um, this judge rules that way on most to, objections to from both sides. Leave. What if any makeup rulings, was But she's wearing. consistent with her oddness. Again, I'm not sure she, she, if she wore makeup on the island. If it was, it was very natural looking. No what, way. if any, injuries did you observe on Miss Heard? No way she's wearing a bunch of makeup on the island in that weather. I didn't observe any. What, if any, injuries did you observe on Mr. Depp? Thank you, Rebecca. The, the marking across the bridge of his nose. After, and um, when did Miss Heard and Mr. Depp leave the island? I believe they left that afternoon. The guests left in the morning, and I believe they left that afternoon. It's a night tight direct. After so Miss Heard and Mr. Depp left the island, what did you do next? We'll talk about um, the makeup thing. Our usual, at a break we too. go into the buildings and uh, we we break them down. We empty out the refrigerators, garbage, take all the perishables out of the house, um, straighten the place up, take the linens away, um, things like that. What did you observe when you went through that process? Ah, uh, damage to the house. Um, the island was the island was as it was when they arrived. The only thing that was different was the there was the uh, liquid on the on the deck with a can, I believe, of mineral spirits or something there next to it, which had leaked out onto the deck. And then in the um, over the railing um, were paint brushes and um, art supplies, paint brushes. Um, paint tubes, uh, the jars that the paints are in, and, and those were all scattered in the bush. Ms. Roberts, when is the first time you provided testimony about this incident in December 2015? I believe it was for another case in May 2020. The UK case. Ms. Roberts, how often have you seen Mr. Depp drink alcohol in the island? Um, he goes through periods of time where he's been here and he doesn't drink and it's non-alcoholic Bex or something like that. Um, it, it varies. Um, sometimes he drinks when he's here. Sometimes he doesn't. Consistent with him saying. How often have you seen Ms. Heard drink alcohol on the island? He has issues with painkillers. Um, she, she drank wine. She drank wine with uh, her. Thank you so much, sir. That's very wine, generous. Thank dinner, you. Um, maybe in the afternoon, but I know definitely with dinner. Did you observe Ms. Heard drinking alcohol when Mr. Depp was not drinking alcohol? Objection leading. No sustained. It's leading. Okay. It is leading. Um, how often have you seen Mr. Depp drunk? The lip smacking is interesting. Um, I do that too sometimes. I would know he has a huge tolerance for alcohol. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen him passed out drunk um, or anything like that. So uh, More consistent testimony. He drinks but I haven't seen him passed out drunk. Okay. 
Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Nothing further. All right, cross examination. Good, Thank you, Your Honor. tight, direct. Let's see what Umbridge does. Hopefully, it won't be a fucking Ms. disaster. Ms. Roberts, the salary you receive for managing the Bahama Island is approximately ten thousand dollars a month. Correct. Correct. Definitely not enough okay. for this shit. And so that comes out to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. And correct. correct. Okay. And you've yes. been and you've been receiving that salary for many years. Correct. Correct. Right. In fact, I think you got a raise to ten thousand ten dollars in two thousand eighteen. She got a ten dollar raise, you y'all. Hold that? your fucking butts. A ten dollar raise. No, I don't know the exact number. This but is I Umbridge. Know I get that that a month. Okay, and that's and that's in addition Hello, Trent, to all you. of the expenses, correct? For running the island, the expenses of running the island. They're trying to say that they're biased because they get paid by Johnny. It's a fair line of questioning. She just comes in so hot. I'm not sure what you're asking me. So the, the other people that are on the island, to the extent they work, they get a different salary, right? Yes. Objection okay. calls and for speculation. All of the expenses you have, you talked about what you have to do to provision the island and everything else and run it. All of those expenses are paid separately, Correct. Correct. She's not okay. buying their fucking groceries um, out of her own salary. Island for 15 years for Mr. God. Depp, is that correct? That's ridiculous. Approximately, yes. All right. Now, let's talk for a moment about those two videos that you you testified to were part of the house. The closet with the, the beads. The first video was missing both the closet and the bathroom, correct? Huh? <laughs> Objection. I, huh? <laughs> I don't remember. I'd have to look at it again. All right. And play the it. Second, it a, no, a, play it. Play it again. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You, you didn't play it through. again. Go ahead. Oh, you I cut know. her off. That's why. I'm sorry. I think in the first video, the beads were the closet, and then there was the bathroom next to the closet. Okay. That was the second. Ask me. That was the second video. Oh. Do you know who? Sorry. Do you that know was who the took second those video. videos? Oh, I did. Okay. When did you take those videos? Breaking news, Johnny Depp pays his employees and they like him and they saw oh, what they saw. It would have to be, uh, I'm not sure, a couple years ago, maybe longer. Okay. I'm, was, not, I'm not sure. Okay. Did you take those videos for the UK trial? I guarantee you this attorney won't object to her own question though. I, she I is better than that. If it was for that. She annoys me. Is there a reason she's not that the closet and the bathroom were left out of the first video. Because I stood in the middle of the room and turned no, the fuck I, around? No, I stood in the house and did a circle around of the house. Okay. <laughs> Who asked you to make that video? Who asked you, anyway? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I wonder if Was she thinks having angry means Adam that Waldman? she's made a point. But it just loses its effect I, and hurts I my don't, ears. I'm not sure. I don't know. Can't recall? I can't remember who asked me. Okay. No, I can't. Okay. Now, the second video, Agreed, that shows the closet, and then there's a door there. Would you agree that door opens up into a bathroom? What door? Next to the closet? Yes. Okay. Amica and lawyer gives everyone a headache. We don't have a video of the, the bathroom, correct? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe they're hiding there the facts. Because the there's and no, no one bathroom. asked you to make a video of the bathroom, correct? Objection, relevance. I'll overrule it. Okay. Correct. Is there a bathroom? Oh, sorry. Or is it fire um, festival? I'm not sure if anybody asked me. To, I, I don't believe I videotaped the bathroom. Okay. And my question was, and no one asked you to videotape the bathroom, correct? Why does Correct. this matter? Okay. Now, let's talk for a moment about the logistics of the island. So, Mr. Depp's house, you we've guys seen like the and subscribe. Of, and you said Maybe if that we bang, the she'll cafe stop. was a, a She's 30 just coming in block, hot. I think you said how, how many yards? Yeah. Like and subscribe for sitting through this woman's cross. I don't cross. know. I walk it. It's it's just outside his house through the parking lot and uh walkway to the cafe. Okay. It's going to have to happen. The, I don't know. I'll also okay. die. And the cafe is we'll where it. 
Mr. Depp would regularly have his meals, correct? How many buildings are on the island? Nobody even asked. Correct. All the guests would have their meals there. Okay. Including Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd if she was there and their children. Well, there wasn't really a correct? sitting area correct. in the okay. house. They and, then, yes. and then you were located on the other side of the island, correct? That's where you stay? I think this attorney, though annoying, uh, I stay in, in the, the is the, of the best island. attorney okay. on this team. How far away is that? From annoying, the cafe in the house. But I think she's the smartest lawyer on this Objection team. compound? Uh, it is compound. I'll uh, sustain the objection. How far, for how this far away is it from the house? Don't get annoyed. You objected Where to her I, feelings. I stay? Yes. This um, team is comes in hot probably a like this. Three-minute golf cart ride. Okay. Five-minute walk. Okay. Uh, and then when other guests come, I think you were talking about tents, do they stay in tents? No, those were the wedding no, tents. The tents were, were um, I'm hoping so. The tents were erected for the, the wedding and then they were dismantled. And sometimes we would erect them if we were asked to, just in case somebody wanted to stay there, but people oh, didn't great. stay in the tents. They stayed in the buildings here. It wasn't fire okay. festival. How many so buildings? How, how much accommodation can you handle in the buildings? How for many other buildings? Guests? Not, I'm not talking about the house, Mr. Depp's house. We've seen that. Um, but how many people can, can actually be accommodated uh, in the buildings? Um, I want to know how many outbuildings are on the island. I want like an overview map. Two bedroom. Like, here's the house. Here's the uh, cafe. Here here's the other Rando buildings. Beach. We have a, um, a beach house, which has a, a, the bed in it. And then we have a... Um, uh, what we call a roundhouse, which has a, a bed in it as well. Okay. Not now, many. When Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were visiting, whether they had the children there or not, um, typically, would you bring the meals to the cafe for each of the meals? I'm very one. I'm very curious why this matters. No, sometimes I would take them to the house. It depended on where they wanted to eat. A lot of it would be hearsay. Right. And then typically, would you join them for the meal or would you leave the meal and then come back and clean up afterwards? Objection compound. All right. That's kind of a fair objection. question. Yeah. All right. We'll take that one at a time. Typically, uh, would you At least she can take it one at a time, though. To them? Myself or Myself or one of the, 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 got, the workers here would, would take the meals. Okay. How, how often was it you that would take them? We'll talk about this at the break. Um, how often? Maybe every other day, every day. It depended on, on how if people were eating in their buildings or eating together. All right. And would you stay and eat the meal with them or would you leave? The way she asked questions makes if we were me for want dinner, to stop listening to her together. talk. Um, usually we would take the food to the places and leave. Thank you, RG. And then would you be called to come pick them up? GK, I don't know who cares no, about this. No, and I don't know why it matters. Sometimes go back in the evenings um, on our own um, and, and clean up and, and turn some of the lights off. And sometimes we would do it in the morning. It depended on what was happening. Okay. So other than bringing the meals, and it could be you or somebody else, uh, how often did you interact with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd during the day? She wants to make sure she's heard the all the way in the Bahamas. That's why she's yelling into the microphone. So she on can be heard. every day? The Skype is, is hard. You got to make sure you're heard. It's in, like when people what can't context, hear, you just yell at them. Other than delivering the meals and picking them up. Oh, just see if anything was needed, if everything was all right, um, things like that. Um, generally passing them if they were walking or in the office or, or, or on the beach. Yeah, Aaron, her style's abrasive. Now, would it be fair to say that you weren't spending 24-7 with them? That's no, fair. I didn't live with them, no. Okay, and would it be fair to say that you don't know what they were doing during the times that you weren't passing them by or bringing meals? Yeah, I don't know what they're doing when I'm not there. Yes, unless they, they were on the beach. Okay. Then I would know. But. So you wouldn't know what happened, what would be taking Amanda, place I will within definitely the house, try. for example, when you weren't there. Correct? Correct. And you wouldn't know whether Mr. Depp was taking drugs, correct? Correct. And you wouldn't know whether Mr. Depp was drinking, correct? This is why she's trying to get to it. 
And the provisioning for the drinking is different. I would only know by cleaning up. And you wouldn't know. Yeah, I would well, know by you cleaning know up. From cleaning up necessarily, whether it was Mr. Depp, Ms. Hurd, or somebody else, would you? Fair. That's fair. Objection hey, compound. You You've got to stand up to object, babe. Go ahead. Yes, this Please is the continue. Milani lady. Yes, this is the Milani um, lawyer unless, from opening. Um, I would know what it was by what was in the garbage or left out of who consumed or, or what was consumed. I would, I would be able to know. Okay. And you wouldn't know what arguments, if there were any, were taking place in that house behind closed doors, right? Only what I saw. Correct. And you wouldn't know whether there was any kind of physical abuse that was taking place behind those closed doors, correct? Maybe she's used to it from Amber. I wouldn't know. That's Correct. That's me being sassy. Now, she let me seems just unfazed take by being you for at. a moment to the December 2015 time Yelling frame. at me like this would not, how, I would not enjoy that. I feel like I'm being scolded. How much advance notice are you typically given for when, they are, when Mr. Depp and his entourage are going to arrive and for how long they're going to stay? Objection, compound. Stand up to object. All right, I'll... I'll stand objection. All right, let's she break sustains it down. a lot of objection. How much notice are you given when Mr. Depp and his entourage are coming? Thank you. <laughs> yes. It varies. Uh, sometimes it's a couple of days, sometimes it's a couple of weeks. So how much notice were you given in December of 2015 oh, about the wedding? To who would be coming for Christmas on the Bahama Island? Cindy I appreciate this. I wasn't there after I left. That's exactly how some of this testimony I believe, feels. Um, sometime in November. Thank you for the okay. super chat, Ryan. And that trip, I, was, I feel like a little bit pilgrimy right. today. And in November, how many people were you told were coming for Christmas on the island? I'm struggling to see a point, but I really want to. I don't recall how many. I don't recall how many people. It was a lot more than Amber, Johnny. Lily Rose, Jack, and was Lily it? Rose's boyfriend, wasn't it? Was it a lot more? Yes, it was. It, in fact, it was Amber's parents, correct? I believe. Amber's so, parents came for Christmas, Rocky right? And Pennington and Josh Drew, correct? <sighs> I believe they were on the list. And Rocky Pennington's parents? Yes, I believe they were on the list. Possible. Do you recall them canceling? Objection, hearsay. I recall. Oh. How is that hearsay? I'll overrule the Because you're asking for them talking to her to cancel. Don't snap back. I recall there was a change um, to the, the guests. When did you learn Unless of I'm that? I'm going to talk about this at the break. Thomas, I, don't I think the jury maybe probably feels like they're being yelled at, too. In the beginning of December, maybe? Middle of December? Do you I must be sure. nervous. Do you recall if it was after December 15? I don't recall. D did you think that was a little strange that here these people were going to be Objection. at Christmas on the island and suddenly they cancel? Objection relevance? I think it's highly relevant. I'll right? sustain the objection. Next question. What? What, if anything, were you told about why Objection, they canceled? Hearsay. Objection, hearsay. I, I, party opponent admission. Yep. Well, you, you don't need a foundation know. for that. Okay. Yeah, who told who her? Who told you that Amber's parents, her best friend and fiance, and her best friend's parents were, were suddenly canceling coming for Christmas on the island? Objection, Objection compound. Yep. I'll allow that. <laughs> I don't know who um, told me, but I did receive a I, I did receive information that um, they weren't coming, and there were other somebody else was coming instead. Make a and, whoosh and who foundation. Who was that? That's somebody funny. else coming instead. Doesn't um, Karen already realize Alice she's talking and, to the manager? It would be Alice and Greg and the children and the man. Okay. And they were coming later, right? They would be joining. That I think was the words. Okay. So on the December 5th, on the December trip, you testified about a few arguments between Amber and Johnny, 
right? Do you recall that testimony? Lawrence Corner, I don't think we're going to be getting a makeup tutorial yes, from Umbridge. Okay. You weren't <laughs> present when Johnny sustained the gash on his nose, correct? At least she called it a gash. That was further than Tara there, called it. No. That's okay. interesting. And you weren't present when the mess was made through the paints that you've described, correct? No. And so you don't know whether there had been a physical altercation and uh, that led to throwing a paint can to try to slow down John. Compound, right? very compound and calls for facts not already in evidence. I would have objected to that. No, I just heard seven ways. yelling in the house. Okay. But that, that yelling Ariana, in the house. It's a fair point. Wasn't some of this might also just be time, was their cross style. It might be how know. long they've Do been in this case. Okay, no. Okay. Now, let's talk about the summer of 2013. Are you aware that Paul Bettany claims he's never met Amber? Objection, relevance. And calls for hearsay. And calls for hearsay. And calls for hearsay. She testified that he was there on the island. With and calls for hearsay. I, I can ask Wait, the question. Really, see if she says. All right, I'll ask the question. <laughs> It is way too early for this kind of energy, um, Kimberly. Are you aware that Paul Bettany has said that he never met Amber Heard? When did he say that, though? No, I, I'm unaware. I, okay. don't, I didn't know that. Well, let's stay on the summer of 2013, if we can. Do you when have a recollection of, of Amber and Johnny, Lily Rose and Jack taking one final trip on the yacht you that Johnny final. was going to be selling to J.K. Rowling? That assumes a lot of facts, not in evidence, and it's compound. I don't know what year that was. I, he I don't sold a yacht to J.K. Was, Rowling? I, I do remember the yacht being sold. If I, if I tell you it was July of 2013, does that help refresh your recollection? No, we don't believe you. Teasing. It's fair. July 9? Yeah, I, I, She's like, whatever. Right. It's no, 2013. I, it doesn't, I just know the yacht was sold. Okay, and you made arrangements, did you not, for a captain... To, to captain the, the yacht and for them to go out on the yacht? No, I didn't have matter? any responsibility for the yacht and, and the crew on the yacht. Okay. Do you have a recollection of being called because Lily Rose and Jack were upset and they wanted hearsay. to leave the yacht and have a helicopter take them away. Objection, Objection hearsay, hearsay, and compound. I'm asking whether she has a recollection. Stop so giving I'll, I'll the question. speaking objection responses. Can you ask me it again? Do you have a recollection of Lily Rose and Jack being upset on the yacht and wanting to leave it immediately so you arranged for a helicopter to come in to fly them away with Amber? Objection, compound. I I'll allow it. Okay, let's just hit the court already said she'd allow it, so objecting the same time isn't really the best option. I, I don't know if Lily Rose and Jack were upset. Um, I do know that um, I did arrange for transportation off the island. Courtney Ben did um, at the time. finish yesterday. And in, and, and in fact, Amber went with Lily Rose, correct? It was Amber and her friend in Lily Rose. Okay. And Jack decided at the last minute to stay back, correct? I don't know if he decided last minute, he stayed. Okay. Do you recall Lily Rose telling you that she was upset because her father was drinking Objection and trying to hide it from, from him? Hearsay. Objection, hearsay. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm asking whether she has a I'll recollection. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Yeah. You're asking um, if she has a recollection of hearsay one. that you can't get to. Do you she, recall you just want to get this in front of the jury. Mr. Depp passing out in the sand face first? I recall that he was uh, passed out on the beach. He was, he was, yeah, he was out on the beach, yes. Okay. And, and do you recall Jack calling you because he was concerned? Objection. Objection hearsay. For hearsay That's and speculative. He called. I haven't asked what he said. No, you, you did. I'll you did. The objection. Yes, you absolutely did. Do you have a recollection of Jack being present when Mr. Depp was passed out face first? I recollect sand? nothing because you keep fucking yelling. Yes. And do you have a recollection of Jack being upset? I, I, I don't have a recollection of him being upset. 
Do you have okay. a recollection of him being happy about it? I, I, no, I, I didn't speak with, with Jack um, about it. Okay. But you recall that Mr. Depp was passed out face first in the sand. That's correct? not what she Objection said. Objection, Allison answered. Ob Objection, Objection. Objection. misstates right. the testimony. Let's talk about makeup for a moment. Ooh, so, bring up the Milani palette. Let's go, Amica. You don't know what type of makeup regimen Amber uses every day, correct? Look at Ben Shu going this fucking correct. shit again. Okay. And in fact, you don't know. You said at one point you're not sure, but it's a natural look. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Okay. And would you agree that there are a number of different types of makeup you can use that would still She's gonna be like, give I have you no a natural fucking clue. look? I don't know. Objection calls for speculation. Uh, uh, I'll allow it. No, because she asked, do you know or are you aware? Which uh, is why it's not I, speculative I'm yet. I'm guessing there is, yes. Okay. okay. That's speculative. And and there's sun in the Bahamas, right? No, Most there's the no time. sun in the Bahamas. Do you know what Amber wears uh, for sunscreen? Um, I think it was um, at one point I had a, a brand Shishido or something like that that was on the island that we provided. Because she provisioned it. <laughs> and do you know whether Amber brought her own as well? I don't know. Do you know whether Amber had a skin condition? In addition to the fecal phobia? I wasn't told. Okay. But you, I take it you didn't ask. Why the fuck would you ask that? No, I, I wouldn't have asked. Would you ever ask an actress condition. that looked okay. at you with that face if they have a skin oh. condition? Holy shit. Julie O, breaking news. The Johnny wedding. Depp has doors for his bathrooms. Yes. It's the uh, wedding was planned highly prejudicial. At sunset, correct? I want to hear more about this. I'm very excited correct. that they're getting into and this. And in fact, it went forward at sunset, correct? That's not what she testified to. It went um, earlier. It, it, was, it was earlier than, in, than, than sunset. So your recollection this is that matters. there's no sunset pictures at the wedding? No, that's not what she said. She said the wedding went forward before sunset. That's misstating the testimony. There could be pictures after the fucking wedding. That's disingenuous. Okay. Stop it. it. There, was, there, was, yeah, there was sunset pictures. The wedding was supposed to take place at sunset. Okay. So uh, last couple questions. The uh, the makeup or not makeup, you were yeah. asked whether you observed any injuries on Amber in the December 2015 time frame. Do you believe Amber would cover up bruises to hide them from the kids? That's compound. She's allowing it because she's- Objection calls no. for speculation. Uh, Do you have any understanding, based on your knowledge of Amber, whether she would try to cover up any bruises or cuts? Same objection. To keep them from the kids. I'll sustain the objection. It's the keep us from you the. It's the keep it from the kids. That's the problem. That she, that Amber was wearing much makeup, but you said she participated in a photo shoot in December 2015. Do you recall that? She didn't say that. Yes, I do. Do you know whether Amber was wearing any makeup for a photo shoot? I'm not sure the, the part that I saw, she was in and out of the water. Do you, do you know whether Amber would want to show bruises or cuts? In objection, calls for speculation. Objection, calls for speculation. I'll sustain the objection. <laughs> I have no further questions. Okay. Thank you. All right. She's like, fuck it, I'm out. Thank God. Y'all, we didn't bing, but we're fucking done. Thank God. Her style of cross is so abrasive and now we're getting into redirect with johnny depp's lawyers Ms. roberts how many times have you seen mr depp consume drugs don't objection, forget to like and leading. subscribe all right sustained objection stop objecting can we just be done um miss bernahoff asked you about um mr depp passed out Umbridge, on the beach her, how would you describe Umbridge. mr depp when you saw him on the beach I want this lawyer to wear blonde braids tomorrow. Um, I he, want he her to start out. wearing I blonde braids like Amber Heard's. And, and he said, I left him underneath the, I believe he was in a hammock. And I, he, I believe he had fallen asleep or he was asleep and the, the hammock had overturned. Um, and I picked him up and um, brushed him off and uh, left him um, on underneath the lanai with Jack. Underneath the lanai. Okay. Be close. No Thank you. Questions. Does Sorry, it get Ms. warm Roberts. in the Bahamas? Subject to recall, Ms. Roberts. 
Yes, potentially. All right. so we'll Ms. Roberts, since you're subject to recall, did not discuss your testimony with anybody and just did not watch uh, anything about this uh, case. Okay, ma'am? Moyock, Amber doesn't okay, even know what makeup right, she wears. Probably. And the photo shoot, they didn't really get into right, the photo the shoot with witness. the makeup, which is interesting. Let's see who the next witness is. We're out Dr. with that Shannon one. Dr. Shannon Curry. She'll come right now. Dr. Who? Dr. Shannon, Shannon Curry. Curry. Can you, is it C-U-R-R-Y? C-U-R-R-Y. Yes. Okay, thank you. I wonder what lawyer it'll be. So a number of you have asked, and it's so good to see all of you in the chat, almost 18,000 or over 18,000 in here. Go ahead and do the likey, subscribe, to YouTube -y things. The attorney switch who they're assigned to. So different attorneys are assigned to different witnesses, and that's why you're switching who's doing direct and who's doing cross. But you can't switch in the middle of the testimony. So if... Um, you know, Elaine Vasquez, who's sitting here next to Johnny Depp, starts a direct examination. You can't have a different attorney finish direct or redirect. If Umbridge does cross, you can't have another attorney also do cross. One attorney, one witness, but different attorneys on the team are assigned to different witnesses, which gives them a lot of time to prep. There are a lot of witnesses in this case, a lot of exhibits. Um, and so the attorneys are kind of assigned to different parts. I will be very interested to see who does the cross-examination of this doctor. Could be Rotten Bourne. It'll probably be one of the lead attorneys, Rotten Bourne or Umbridge. So we'll see. Um, the attorney tone and style overshadows any testimony. Yes, I think that this legal team really tries to sound like they're making a big point. But when you try to make everything a big point by fucking yelling about it, nothing is a big point. And that is really, um, really plain to see. But there are pictures at sunset. Yeah, there's pictures of sunset, whatever. But she is overshadowing her own questions by her style. And that's not that's not ideal. And it's not something um, that I appreciate. Is this the next witness coming in? Or are we just focusing on this individual for a reason? I don't know. These attorneys went and moved to the back, which is interesting to me that these three moved to the front row instead of sitting at council table. I'm interested why they chose to do that. Um, so we'll see. I, I, we're still waiting for this next witness to come in. I'm going to do a few more super chats. Go ahead and like, and subscribe. We're, I think almost at 26,000 subscribers. You guys. Wild stuff. How do they decide who's allowed in the audience? There is like a lineup outside where people get wristbands. So that's it. Um, I, I can't pronounce her last name. Well, Sheree. So I named her Umbridge. That's what she reminds me of. It's a whole vibe of like, you know, her whole thing motion to name her amica umbridge we can absolutely name her amica umbridge um she gives karen vibes i just can't do you think the cross on amber will be done by the woman on johnny's team it should be otherwise it could leave a bitter taste right i think it should be done by one of the women on amber's team the doctor's hair is very cute doc we like the we like the dude. good morning dr curry good morning or at least i do y'all might not i can't speak i'm ray dennison who? Could you state your full name for the record? Shannon Curry. Wait, who the fuck are you? What do you do for a living? You're bringing I in somebody new? I am a clinical and forensic psychologist. This will be interesting. What's your educational background? I received, well, I started college at Georgetown University. I then transferred to the University of California, Irvine, where I received my bachelor's degree in psychology and social behavior. She testifies I completed a lot. my master's degree in psychology at the to her at Pepperdine University. I went on to hey, complete my Pepperdine. doctoral degree in clinical psychology at Pepperdine University, which included several training rotations at different practicum sites. Those are essentially clinical rotations yeah, look, we do explain to learn to the various jury. types of psychology. You learn how to do I psychological how much assessment. Testified counseling, et cetera, and you do that in a variety of different settings. It's a lot. And then I completed a year-long doctoral internship at an American Psychological Association accredited uh, doctoral internship. You do this year before you get yep. your degree. And that was at Tripler Army Medical Center. Expert witness. Um, it's traditionally a military internship. They did admit two civilians. I was lucky enough to be one of them. I then completed two years of postdoctoral training at Hawaii State Hospital a locked forensic psychology facility. And uh, that's where you essentially have individuals with severe mental illness who have committed crimes. Yeah, you've done Expert any witness. additional uh, coursework? Or Based anything? on her, the way she's testimony, the I way have. she's so, looking at the jury. Uh, after I completed my doctorate she's clearly and my postdoctoral training, 
I obtained a, it's called a postdoctoral master of science degree and trying clinical to get a good psychopharmacology. Of her to share. Uh, that is uh, for partial fulfillment of prescription privileges, meaning that it's part of what See how we she need looks to the jury to, to explain medications as a psychologist because psychologists don't traditionally prescribe and we can do that with certain military jurisdictions and other states. Um, I also obtained um, advanced training in the Gottman method of couples therapy. Uh, I completed all three levels of training and then I'm also a Gottman educator for several workshops involving uh, helping parents learn how to prepare to bring their baby home and uh, helping couples without serious problems improve their relationships. Oh, Eric, what's the Gottman method? The Gottman method is a highly research-based uh, method of couples therapy. It's very structured, so uh, different than what many people expect when they think about couples therapy. Uh, I always tell my clients I don't Maybe want them to come the in, couch. just tell each other all their problems, and then have an awkward, silent drive home. In this therapy, they Fair. come in, they complete a really structured assessment in the beginning. So they complete a bunch of questions. It gives me a ton of information about their relationship Gosh. before we even get started and really identifies the areas we're gonna target with structured interventions during each session. I think of it almost like a class. Okay. Um, did you get, in the course of your education, any specialized training? Any what? Specialized training? I did. So uh, my internship specifically was dedicated to um, essentially working with post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic stress. Um, a lot of my training has been with psychological assessment and testing. And then my training during practicum and then in my postdoctoral work was dedicated to working with trauma populations and also well, conducting military, forensic psychological sense. assessments. Oftentimes, um, forensic psychological assessments actually refers to doing testing and an interview and a couple other things for purposes related to law. So it's the application of psychology to the courts, to, to legal issues. Um, and sometimes that also involves uh, that doing assessments for the military to determine whether somebody has sustained a mental disability after combat. Um, you indicated that uh, you did some work at Tripler. Uh, what's Tripler? Emma, and this what's is the work? her. So Tripler Army Medical talking Center talking about is her a experience because she's an expert Hawaii, witness. Ever this is very common with expert witnesses. They'll go for a half an hour on why they're qualified there. to be experts. And um, so this is it's super common. one of the top training sites for military psychologists. I was very, very lucky to be able to train there. They have wonderful funding and a lot of new research going on, particularly for PTSD, but really for all areas of mental health. While I was there, I did rotations in family psychology, so doing family th therapy. I worked with children, but I also did a neuropsychology rotation, learning really the ins and outs of advanced psychological assessment, um, identifying not just mental issues, mental Ivan Luna, thank you for the input illness, but that Amber didn't want her to testify. She's testifying. We're going to get a and we'll see what happens. Doing those PTSD evaluations, and then also working with service members who were struggling with a whole host of issues, military stressors, normal life stressors, and then also those who sustained tremendous uh, trauma you, KK. from combat. Uh, do you still continue to work with the military? I do, actually. Our practice, I, she seems very proud. My practice is very focused on military service members, veterans, and their families. She seems very pleased that that's that she's able to work um, with people with trauma, which is a great background to have if we're going to be getting into uh, herd and in Depp's own trauma. Uh, litigation matters. She's done a lot of work. It's clear. Well, she's uh, very used to testifying. She's very comfortable. Most of my litigation, if we're talking about civil work, that has mostly been reports. So this is my first time testifying in a civil no matter. No way. Uh, the majority of my forensic work has been in criminal law or providing psychological oh, okay. assessments. And Fair. then I produce a really methodical report, um, which is typically reviewed by a judge. Um, and, and a determination is made, or usually there's a settlement uh, beforehand. Yeah, so uh, she testifies in criminal, not civil. Work, That's fair. Uh, in connection with, with any particular courts. 
I do. So I, I am actually not sure if I'm on the list anymore in Honolulu, but um, I am a certified forensic evaluator for the state of Hawaii, which means that um, I have been appointed by the court to conduct evaluations for matters that are presented. Uh, okay. And then I'm also so on um, that makes the sense. list of forensic evaluators in several courts in Southern California. Um, and then I'm also, I'm contracted by the military, the Department of Defense, uh, now and again for evaluations of PTSD. See the way she's looking to the members. jury and explaining uh, okay, to them what she does? Uh, she's keeping PTSD it interesting. A couple of times now. And yes. what are you referring to there? She's so showing PTSD she's is a mental illness. Um, it can develop after so a person has been them exposed to a as traumatic opposed to lecturing event. them. And our diagnostic statistical manual, the DSM, is sort of the authoritative manual of mental illnesses. We, it's considered our Bible of mental illness. We go there for diagnoses. And according to that, there's a specific type of trauma that a person must experience for them to be able to qualify for a diagnosis of PTSD. And that's an event that is life threatening. It can also involve sexual assault and you can experience that she either and ben directly, are at the top. but you can also be traumatized if you've seen it happen to somebody else or if it's happened unexpectedly or violently to somebody close to you, a family member or a friend. Um, and then there's also a provision for people who are first responders, if they're encountering really traumatic information regularly, um, oh. that qualifies as a trauma. Now, there are a number of symptoms that can develop. We'll, 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 sure. We'll talk about that. Some okay. More. If they uh, come in hot on cross, it's going to make them all look like idiots. Are credentials relevant to the work that you do? <laughs> well, I am a licensed psychologist. She gave a bunch. Um, Where? In California and Hawaii. Okay. And any other Bethany, certifications or other credentials? Prestridge, she does look a little Not like Jennifer Not that I Lawrence. can think of off the top of my head other, other than the training with the Gottman method of couples therapy. Okay. Mariah said she presents herself so well I can aspire to Have be like that. She's the real MVP. Hawaii She's done this a lot though. This is through practice. This is not yes, by accident. In what capacity? Well, I am. I, so that I guess would be a credential. So I am a certified forensic evaluator for the state of sure, Hawaii. Sure, about that though. Oh, I do get make, young Meg Ryan vibes too. In connection with your doctorate. She was does there say a Hawaii component? correctly. There was. So uh, would you like me to tell you about it? Yes, please. Okay. So <laughs> I would conducted you like me a to yes, study please, doc. while I was at Pepperdine completing my doctorate. It's called a dissertation. So when you're obtaining your doctorate, she's you great. contribute something to the, way the she's scientific field. Explaining to them. And typically that involves doing what we call novel science. So you're doing an experiment, you're finding out new information like and helping the field progress. So I did research in Peru and I was Potato, yes. essentially looking at the effectiveness of a therapy intervention there for kids who were growing up in this community called Ayacucho, which was exposed to 20 years of guerrilla warfare, the longest guerrilla war in the history of the world. And uh, there were a lot of issues in that community, tremendous trauma. And my research uh, was yeah. around uh, finding interventions that were really effective for that community. Wow. Where do you work now? I work for the Curry Psychology Group. Uh, what does business. the Curry Psychology Group do? We're a multi-specialty mental health center. So we have neuropsychologists who do Ingo testing opacity. with kids. She's we have great. therapists, individual therapists, couples therapists, family therapists. We even have a meditation teacher. We basically try to meet the needs of our community and we highly specialize in working with military personnel and their families. Yeah. She's great. Who's the Curry in Curry Psychology I, um, Group. I, I'm Dr. Curry. How many people work for you? As of right now, I believe it's 13. That's my best friend. She's a real bad bitch. We, we stand Dr. Curry. How long have you been doing this kind of work? She's been very dedicated. For about 15 years. To her work. How much of your therapy practice focuses on treating individuals? I would say about half of it is individuals, half is couples. Okay. Do you do any training of students? I do. What's of course she that? does. So uh, of course she we does. have several unlicensed professionals at our office and um, they're earning their additional hours so that they can get licensed. So they're able to see clients 
And then I meet with them regularly to supervise them, discuss their cases, provide them with information about different diagnoses, interventions, and treatment methods. Missy, thank you for that comment. How did you it's get very involved kind. In this case? I was contacted by yes, Ms. How? Camille Vasquez, one of the attorneys for Mr. Depp. How did you okay. get involved? Um, and what did you do? What was the nature of the contact? Ms. Vasquez called me and indicated um, that she might be interested in having me meet the legal team so that I could discuss my expertise and possibly provide my opinions related to the matter. Thomas, we're getting to that now. What she hasn't said yet what she did. Uh, we're getting there. On. So initially, uh, my role that I understood at the time was to review the case materials and Vinnie, um, yes. provide my opinions regarding anything that I noticed I like that too. was consistent or even inconsistent with the psychological science um, that exists today on intimate partner violence in Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's relationship. Casey okay. D, right. I think I still want to be there, here. Uh, intimate partner violence. What are you talking about? So there are a um, multitude of different definitions depending on the source or She's the state. She's the expert uh, on DV. But essentially intimate partner violence is abuse. It could be physical, psychological, uh, and it's from and she's one defining partner abuse to for them. another that a big in an deal. intimate relationship. Okay. Um, did your role in this case evolve over time? Yes, uh, it shifted. So I was retained uh, in at the end of January 2021. This is going to be interesting. And then uh, had just barely begun to review the documents. The case was postponed. And then in October 2021, um, I was asked uh, by counsel to provide a psychological evaluation of Ms. Hurd. That's going to be real interesting. The, She'll probably be on the uh, stand the rest of the day. Were you ever asked to do an evaluation? A psycho psychological evaluation of Mr. Depp. No. The court okay. ordered the herd evaluation. Is Umbridge uh, the one doing cross? Yes. Types of this is an Umbridge witness. Look analysis. at her taking notes. So <laughs> I reviewed uh, quite a few documents as part of my evaluation. That included um, all of the, all the audio? documents, Ms. Hurd's uh, medical records by Dr. Kipper, her prior mental health treatment records, I believe. I reviewed records from uh, Dr. Amy Banks, Dr. Bonnie Jacobs, Dr. Cohen, Connell Cohen, um, uh, and also a significant portion of my review involved uh, notes from Nurse Erin Filotti at the time, Erin Borum, who spent a significant time with Ms. Hurd and her Amy, direct company. We might all have I a crush also on this reviewed therapist. exhibits, um, quite a few audio recordings. A video recording, several video recordings, or possibly photographs. I might be getting them confused. Did she go through the audio? Um, and multiple witness statements, testimony, and um, declarations. Did there come a time when you met directly with Ms. Hurd? Yes, I did. So in conducting my evaluation, I met with Ms. Hurd on two this separate dates, orders. December 10th and December 17th, 2021. Uh, approximately how much time have you spent with Ms. Hurd? So the evaluation, uh, we spent 12 hours directly with one another. Um, however, there were more there were more hours involved in the evaluation with some breaks. So we spent seven hours together on the first day, December 10th. Um, not necessarily together because there was a one hour lunch break and about a half hour with breaks split up through the day. Love and light. and we then might on the see 17th, her for the rest of the day. we spent a little more than eight hours in the evaluation from start to finish with a one hour break and another half hour of breaks distributed throughout the day. This is going to be real good testimony. As, as a result of the work that you performed, did you form any opinions with respect to Ms. Hurd? I did. What were those opinions? I, uh, the results of Ms. Hurd's evaluation supported two diagnoses, Ooh. borderline personality disorder and, there's that. and histrionic personality disorder. Oh shit. That what I didn't know. A diagnosis. A diagnosis is a way that we essentially, that psychologists, psychiatrists, anybody in the mental health field thinks about a disorder. It helps us to communicate a set of symptoms that a person is experiencing. And along with that set of symptoms, it, it tells other professionals a lot about how those symptoms might have developed, how that person might behave, perceive the world. Um, it also drives treatment. The real oh, purpose there it is. is to determine what sort of in interventions will be most effective for the person. Yeah. 
Um, previously, you made reference to, uh, I think you called it the DSM-5. What's yes. that? So the DSM-5, that stands for the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, uh, version 5. And uh, that contains every diagnosis we use in mental health. And uh, we it's, it's the authoritative manual of mental diagnoses. Is uh, performing diagnoses something you typically do in your line of work? Yes. Thank you. Um, so you referenced uh, two personality disorders. What's a personality disorder? To understand a personality disorder, I think it can be helpful first to kind of define personality. So personality, right. something we take for granted, but these are the traits, the characteristics, the way we think, we feel, and we act that make us who we are. She's like, cancel, and let me help you ask a better question. stable over time we'll and across situations. We might, uh, you know, be sure to mind our P's and Q's when we're meeting somebody new. But overall, if somebody were to describe us or if we were to describe ourselves, we have a pretty good sense of who we are. Um, sometimes an easy way to think of it is imagining how you might describe a brother or sister or a child if you have children. Their personalities are pretty clear to you. A personality disorder is some sort of dysfunction in those enduring traits. So as opposed to other types of mental illness, um, when you think about something like depression, that's episodic. It comes and it goes. And when it's treated with medication, it can pretty much be completely well, mitigated or minimized in a person's life and their personality is still there separate from the depression. When we have a personality disorder, there are going to be disturbances in several different areas that are visible in almost all different facets of their life. Is there a manner in which uh, personality disorders are commonly diagnosed? Yes, so they can be diagnosed in a treating environment. A uh, treating psychologist or a therapist or a psychiatrist simply does a diagnostic interview, which involves assessing multiple areas of a person's history back down through childhood. I'm going to stop you for a second. And yes. y'all, as, they're covering, as they're covering <laughs> these personality uh, disorders, these again, be mindful so that treating environment, that therapy, doesn't mean that Amber Heard's a terrible person. It explains um, her behavior, but it's not an the excuse. The mental health provider so, will ask them questions. Thank you all to for being mindful sort of they've experienced and what sort of, of that, and mindful of the way that, that we talk about with these this. disorders or rule it's out a way these disorders. To prove that explain. there is no reason for these disorders to be considered. They might also pay attention to their observations of the client over time and new information the client provides them. The most reliable way, however, to ever come about a diagnosis really is through a comprehensive psychological assessment. And I might use the words assessment, examination, testing interchangeably. They all mean the same thing. It's combining information from multiple different sources. Um, one main source is psychological testing using validated objective measures. That means that they've been tested, they've been shown to be accurate for testing what you wanna test and in the environment you're testing. So there are measures specific for court environments where someone might respond differently. You integrate that with the same interview I was telling you that people would do for therapy. We do that as well. And then in a courtroom setting, you're gonna look at all the legal records, all of those documents, corroborating information to sort of check your hypotheses that may be developing and I also check against if she the heard the audio statements to confirm whether you have enough evidence of a certain diagnosis. So what's a clinical interview? A clinical interview is a very comprehensive interview. It includes a person's entire life history, um, as well as very specifically looks at any symptoms they might have. This can start as far back as birth. You might find out if there were any issues with their delivery, um, any uh, genetic issues, any intellectual issues. How did they do? What was their home life like? How was discipline handled? What's again, their relationship with their primary very caregivers? Difficult were they right, raised childhood by is going to come up. Their parents. How many siblings do they have? How did they get along with their siblings? How many times did they have to move? Were, was there any abuse? Relearn, did I they have that. any? really significant life experiences that come to mind when they think about their childhood. How were they as a student? Did they need special services? Did they get in trouble at school? And you do this, you continue on high school. What were their hobbies? Did they play sports? 
How many friends did they have? Did they have any trouble keeping those friendships? And you get into adulthood. Did they go to college? Did they not go to college? How come? What sort of jobs have they held? How did those jobs go? How did they end? That's always an important question. She's what very sort of engaging to the relationships juror. have they been Look involved She's in? looking right at them. How do they identify them what's going on. sexually, culturally? Um, let's see, what else? What sort of symptoms have they experienced? Um, you go she through the entire him. gamut no. of some of the main symptoms. You might screen for depression, um, any disorganized thinking. That means thinking that isn't necessarily in touch with reality. And uh, any current distress they may be ha ha having today. Tiffany, Amber doesn't look happy. This would be very hard to have all of this play out publicly so, and talk about your psychological uh, mental health. This would be hard. that supported it from multiple but sources. they're in it. Um, I conducted testing, including um, one of the main tests that I used uh, she obtained scores that Alan, were consistent you're welcome. with those diagnoses. And then I also, um, there was evidence of those diagnoses in her records and in her self-report. Okay. All right, Council, why don't we just go ahead and take a pause break. for a second while we go ahead and take our morning recess. All right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our 15 minute morning recess. No, not the watch, the, case and do not the do watch is not loose. Okay? The watch is on the top. The watch is not underneath. I'm very confused about the you wearing of the watch. Like today. To uh, give me a moment, sir. Council. You have not been here. We don't know who the fuck you are. You said your name, but you are coming in. I think he's the attorney that just got Pro Hoc Vice. But don't don't come in like you know the judge. You have not been here for days. Stop it. Counsel, just sit down and wait. The entertainer's secret is getting me through. Um, again, she's watching the jury leave. And doctor, since you're on the stand now, do not discuss your testimony with anybody to include the attorneys at this point. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and we'll come back at 1145. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. So about 15 minutes for a break. Um, they've cut the audio in the courtroom. We're going to go ahead and keep this up until everybody leaves the courtroom. Well, no, we're not because the feed's going to go ahead and cut. So y'all, hello, all of you that have joined us. We're at over 21,000 people across platforms on YouTube. We are almost at 26,000 subscribers. If you haven't liked and subscribed, go ahead. I'm going to get to questions um, and super chats. I'm going to try to do a bit of both as much as we can. Just a reminder, as this witness is on the stand. She has diagnosed Amber Heard with mental illnesses, but we are not experts. We are not psychologists or psychiatrists. I mean, some of you in the chat might be, but we are not as a whole. So, you know, th she's going to be giving the context to make this make sense. I imagine she will probably go to well after lunch because she's reviewed so much in this case. I imagine because she's an expert in intimate partner violence, she's also going to talk about abuse. It's going to give context for the jury that abuse can be both physical and psychological. I imagine that the defense, if they are wise, they will be hitting on the psychological aspect of abuse because the jury is going to need to understand what abuse is to understand if there's defamation here. So that's going to be a really important part of this. I also wanted to give some thoughts on the testimony this morning um, because I think there were some some main parts that might not have seemed like a big deal that were a big deal to me with the island keeper uh, testifying. I think the wedding testimony is very interesting. I think it pulls right into the theory of the case from depth side that Amber Heard is the one or someone on her team is the one who got the paparazzi to the courthouse when she went in to get that original domestic violence restraining order with visible bruises on her face. I think it also goes against everything that her attorney has said about that incident, about her covering up. She was covering up to hide bruises from the kids. She was doing this. You didn't see. She had makeup. Well, then if you're so if you're so concerned, why aren't you wearing makeup to the courthouse? And I think it goes against their theory of the case. But also, um, Amber Heard wanting to be um, seen by the paparazzi is a kind of a consistent theme that they are going to argue about with her calling the paparazzi when she went or allegedly calling the paparazzi when she went to go get to court and get that restraining order and going out early. It look, I don't know how many of you have been in a wedding dress. I have no idea what her wedding dress was like, but if you are on an Island in the Bahamas, you are talking about like swampy, hot, humid, weather 
what bride is going out into the sun and the hot with their hair and their makeup and their wedding dress to be out there early with their entire wedding party. It's like, no, I'm showing up at the last fucking second. So I look amazing. Humidity is going to give you about 10 minutes to look your best. So I am surprised and not surprised. And I wonder if Depp's attorneys will, um, will connect that together, that she was out there early and there was helicopters going around and they had planted at sunset so that the helicopters couldn't see. And with that, um, her going out there early is very interesting to me because was she again trying to get the uh, photos taken and to try to be in in the view of the paparazzi? So I thought that was very interesting testimony that maybe we'll see Johnny Depp's team uh, pull around. It sounds... Can you say that again? No, I can't say it again, Siri. But I think that we have a very male jury and a very male jury is not necessarily going to think about um, a bride with her hair and makeup done, not wanting to be out in the heat and humidity and the sun that allegedly exists in the Bahamas is not going to want to be out in the heat and sun and, and, um, and all of it before their wedding. They're going to want to show up right at the moment. But now we know that Umbridge, who's doing the objections, is going to be doing the cross-examination of this doctor. And I imagine it is going to be feisty. I, I just We saw her coming in hot today, but when she comes in hot on this doctor, I think, again, when witnesses are very liked, especially when they are expert witnesses, it's going to be interesting to see her be like, how much are you paid by Johnny Depp? And you're not credible and blah, 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 blah. So they're going to try to um, get around that. But this judge required Amber Heard to take the psychological evaluation because this was all put into evidence. I don't think we're going to be done with this. I really don't think we're going to be done with this um, until late this afternoon. And I'm kind of bummed about that. Umbridge, well, because I won't be able to be here and talk about it with you. I'm going to be silently internally screaming at my phone, streaming from a plane. Thank God Delta changed their Wi-Fi plans to only $5 a flight. Can this become a criminal case? Why, why not? No, it can't. Uh, Mostly it's too late. Um, Mostly people didn't report to the police. This is kind of the end of the road on this case. So, and you guys don't forget to do again the likey, subscribey, YouTube things. Let's get to some super chats and questions. And today I have been trying to pull them up um, as we've been going and kind of give so so we can keep them moving. So I would snap back at Amber Heard's lawyer. This is a this is a witness who testifies clearly in criminal cases. I think that she probably won't, but it's interesting. Um, When she said diagnosis is just a way to inform treatment, I was screaming, but that's really all it is. It can explain so much, but it doesn't have to define who you are. The nuanced take, this is not only a nuanced take, but this is the right take. It doesn't, but it's going to help explain behavior and it's going to help explain behavior in the cycle of this relationship with Amber Heard feeling abandoned when she leaves, uh, when Johnny Depp tries to leave and Johnny Depp needing to flee when things start to fight and she starts to fight, it's going to explain that cycle that we're seeing with them with the abuse or the outburst and then the contrition and the the kind of love bombing that comes after. These are both people from very difficult backgrounds who have a lot of trauma and they were not good together at all. So as much as, you know, a lot of the interwebs is like Amber Heard's lying and she very well may be proven to be. We've seen her lie about specific things. This jury might decide she's lying about all of it. It doesn't undo the brokenness that is there. And so we can evaluate this with compassion because I really think Amber Heard seems to be operating on a default and she cannot get out of her own way from that default. And it's it's really just sad to watch it all play out, isn't it? Let's get to some of these super chats. Thank you so much, you guys, for your generosity. Emily, does Ben need to sign an NDA when he's hired? And does that get thrown out when he has to testify? Congrats on the new subscribers. I mean, I'm excited that the law nerd community is growing and people are like, law tube is a thing? Hell yes. We're going to talk law all day long. I'm here for it. Um, Yes, Ben likely signs NDAs with his work, though we probably wouldn't even need to be asked to. But most NDAs do not block and legally cannot block you from giving testimony that you're subpoenaed to give. So if you are required, if you see someone do something that's illegal and you are, you know, contacted by the police, your NDA doesn't stop you from giving a report. So NDAs only go so far, but they do not block proper legal process and they legally cannot do so. 
finally caught my first love, even though I've followed since the Tati suits. First live, I'm guessing, unless I'm your first love, in which case, why, thank you. <laughs> I'm being, I'm, I'm joking. Um, just wanted to show some love from one ADHD or to another. You're welcome. And again, it's part of why I have compassion for what Amber Heard's going through. Diagnoses can feel overwhelming. They can feel embarrassing. And to sit there and have it play out to the world and have, you know, I am sure not everyone on the internet is going to be kind about her having BPD and histrionic personality disorder, HPD. And I don't love that either. I don't love that people are going to be like, well, you know, just stigmatizing all of this. Her behavior is still her behavior. And this is a way to explain it. She probably just needs a whole lot more treatment. Um, Chandler binged 225 and move and quickly moving towards oil slick hair. I mean, we are definitely quickly moving towards oil slick hair. And yes, we binged at 225 earlier. And I think we're, well, on the front end, I'm showing we are um, at 226. So yes, you guys, it's been absolutely incredible. Thank you. Um, I think we did that with the NDA. Good morning from under F-150, under an F-150. Paige, I want to know why you're under an F-150. Are you okay? Or are you fixing the F-150? <laughs> These streams are the only thing getting me through this suspension work. Ah, that, that makes, that makes a lot more sense. Well, um, good luck with the suspension work. I have, I don't know what, I, I, I don't really know how one does that. You rock. Love you. Thank you, Herbert. Love you too. Um, Melissa said, join today. Happy to be here and learning. That is really the goal here in covering these cases. Not only am I interested in pop culture and fascinated about what's coming out, but I hope you guys are learning about court and court process. And we're going to start getting into these questions with, um, or the questions about cross-examination and Umbridge's style of cross-examination. Good morning, Emily. Who do you recommend we watch while you're on vacation? We'll miss your streams while you are offline. Thomas Murphy Burke, I will link them below. There are lots of different law tubers that are streaming different points of this trial. Alita over at Legal Bites is streaming gavel to gavel every single day. The girl, she the work she is putting in over on her channel. I think she's probably going to hit 100K today. And she brings on panels to have very much more structured discussions about this case from a lot of different legal experts and law tubers. I don't know how often Rakeda is streaming. Again, his chat is more like Thunderdome. So when I talk about um, us coming from a point of compassion, that's not always the style of jokes always the, over there. But again, um, that's for you to choose. Not everybody's style. But also, if it is your style, it's, you know, that's where the jokes live. Uh, I think the lead attorney is streaming some, and I don't know who else. So there are definitely other attorneys that are streaming this. Those are the three that I know off the top of my head. Um, watching live from the UK, the highlight for me from yesterday hearing was the defense lawyer objecting to himself. I I loved the defense lawyer objecting because he didn't like the answer that was coming out. And the judge was like, you asked it. And you could hear the undertone of dummy. But my favorite part was when Ben said, it was Friday. Yay. <laughs> it was so wholesome. He was too wholesome for this entire trial. Um, you getting on a plane means things will pop off. The jaded, yes, I'm paying for Wi-Fi. It's just going to happen. Um, good morning, Emily. New law nerd following, love following along. Thank you so much. I love having you guys here. If you haven't read Disco Bloodbath, it's the James St. James memoir, I think. Also, watch the movie Party Monster, which is based off that book. I mean, when I have time to do research, I will. Can Disney sue Amber for his injury if within the statute of limitations? I, I mean, theoretically, if it's proven that she caused the injury, could they try to recoup some of the funds? It depends on their contracting. It would be a far off possibility. I think if it was a very strong possibility, they would have already done it. Keishla, thank you for your uh, coverage. Excellent commentary. You are welcome. I love that you call her umbrage. I just, I can't with her. And it's the thing is, Umbridge is the smartest, and I'm going to get to this question in a second, Angela. Umbridge, I think, is the best lawyer on that legal team. She asks good questions. She does a good cross-examination. Every time she gets objected to, she doesn't pout like Rottenberg, who's like, or rotten porn. But your honor, she actually has responses, though I don't like her style. Her responses inform the jury of what she's trying to get into, and the judge hasn't shut her down yet. So she's doing her work. The style and the tone is so fucking abrasive that it is hard to listen to. She could come in very kind. So you're paid by Mr. Depp. Yes. So you enjoy working for Mr. Depp. Yes. So you make about this much. Yes. 
There's no need to fight with that witness, yet they're going to answer your questions. If they stop answering your questions, the jury will be on your side if you start pushing back on them. But it is not clearly her style. Her style is to come in hot and heavy. She put me off during opening statements and I can't overcome it. I, and I'm telling you guys, that is where I'm at. She chafes listening to, but I do think she's the smartest lawyer on that team. Am I missing something? What part of the sexual violence Amber Heard claims? We haven't seen any part of it yet, but Amber Heard's case comes after this case. So they said that there would be an opening statements, but we also saw statements from the court saying that that shouldn't have been gotten into. So we'll see. Question, can they recall Ms. Duders now that the judge knows Eve Barlow lied about the Instagram post? No, they can't because Eve, Bar our, Eve Barlow's bringing it to the attorney's attention and the attorney's seemingly not looking or disingenuous being like this means this to the judge is only relevant into it's how the judge started questioning Ms. Duders. But once the judge started questioning Ms. Duders, she said she had seen clips and that's the full stop. That's the end. That's the end. That's the full stop of that. So no, she cannot be recalled because she said she had seen clips. Um, no matter the official ruling, do you think there has been justice for Johnny? I think that this case is tremendously important for remembering that there are two sides to everything. I think it's very, very difficult when a large story comes out involving allegations. We are all very much invested, but also as humans, I think we have very low tolerance for discomfort and for waiting and for patience. And so it is hard when something comes out, you want the resolution. It's like, there's these allegations, but I want it resolved. These allegations started coming out in 2016. It is 2022 and we're still dealing with it. The court process takes a very long time. It's much easier to be like, well, Amber Heard said this and therefore Johnny Depp is this. It's very hard to say, Amber Heard said this, but there's questions in the middle. So I'm not sure how this shakes out yet because that leaves you unresolved and it leaves you a little bit uncomfortable wanting to know the resolution. It's why I'm always very cautious when stories start to break. I'm like, okay, but where is the rest of it? And sometimes right now it can be hard to ask questions because people are like, oh, well, if you have questions, you're not, you're not believing everyone. And it's like, no, I very much want to believe them. I also want to see the proof. And that's really where lawyers come in going, I hear what you're saying. Pause. I need to know more. And that's why I say so often, I have questions. I see what you're saying, but I have questions. And it's been very interesting to me with everything we've seen with Hollywood being exposed for the horrible way women are treated. We have seen multiple allegations come out. There is a first one, and then there's almost a domino effect. And we didn't see that ever with Johnny Depp. So do I think he's been vindicated in part with the way that the media treated him? Yes. Do I think that him getting his story out probably feels like justice to him? Yes. But really, it's going to be up for, I mean, the court of public opinion right now to decide if Johnny has gotten justice or if he feels that way. I hope that after testifying, he feels resolved because no matter what this jury decides, his story's been told now. And that cross, the direct examination, no, the redirect examination yesterday ended with that audio of Amber Heard saying, you know, essentially tell a judge, tell a jury, who's going to believe you? Tell them, Johnny, I, Johnny Depp, a man, I too am a victim of domestic violence. And his last statement was, I said, yes, because I am. I think that testimony will carry this trial and will be what people remember from this is Johnny Depp sitting on the stand saying, you severed my finger. You hit me in the face with a mineral spirits can. You assaulted me. And then you turned around and said, Who's going to believe you? Which for anyone who's been in a partner uh, relational violence relationship has probably heard those words of go ahead. They're not going to believe you. And that's the difficult thing about this case for me is it allows abusers to lean into who's going to believe you. And hopefully Johnny Depp has pulled back the curtain on who's going to believe you to show that I think at least from what I'm seeing on social media, people believe Johnny Depp. And I don't think that that necessarily means we've got defamation here. I still have questions, but do I believe Johnny Depp's the victim of domestic violence? Yes, I do. Um, we talked about the SV with, with regards to the op-ed. We haven't gotten to Amber Heard's case yet. Are there rules about lunch break? Do they keep, do they separate? Yes. The parties probably have um, like conference rooms they use within the courthouse and the jury has to stay away from everyone else. They generally have juror badges. So nobody talks to them and they tend to sit together. 
Um, yesterday, there was testimony that Amber Heard made Paul Bettany's son cry. Oh, we got to talk about Twitter real quick because Umbridge stepped in it fucking again. Hold on. I just saw this on Twitter um, as I was going to post something. And let me find it real quick. It's, I think, in my mentions. Where is it? Come on, Twitter. It's in my mentions. There's a lot in my mentions right now, but hold on. There was a image of Amber Heard with Paul Bettany after, um, I'm still looking for it, after her attorney testified that she had never been in the same place with Paul Bettany. And I'm like, the internet's fucking fast, man. They're going to find this. So let me look at that real quick because I do want to pull it up and mention it. Let's see. Where is it? Which, which responses is it in? Twitter confuses me. Maybe it'll be less confusing now that Musk owns it. Doubtful. I doubt it will be less confusing. And this is probably a good time to say if you guys, um, if you guys don't follow me across the social medias, I'm at the Emily D Baker across platforms. But um, didn't Umbridge say Amber Heard has never met Paul Bettany? That's exactly what she said. That's exactly what she said. That's exactly what she fucking said. Here's the thing when you stream a trial, Umbridge, you're going to get caught in 4K when you say shit that's wrong. And this is like the third time. You are the smartest lawyer on that team. Stop being slimy. It's not going to help. You are, don't, what the fuck? We've never met. Look, internet, I, I, I don't have any reason to disbelieve that this article is true. My level of annoyance, my level of annoyance, she full, she full said it with her whole chest. She asked the question, but were you aware that Paul Bettany said that he's never met Amber Heard? I want Paul Bettany to testify. Yes, I met Amber Heard. She made my son cry. The internet finds it fucking fast too. The internet's like, really? These actors have never crossed paths? Really? And she's just wrecking herself. She's just wrecking herself. Like these are unforced errors. Seriously. Pissing me off. Pissing me off, Umbridge. Don't be slimy. Ooh, the judge is back. Emily's ranting and the judge is back. Judge is back. I'm surprised Great, the chat didn't uh, all start saying judge is back. Some of the, uh, I was in the middle of a rant. Considered in determining, uh, I'll finish that rant later today. Don't you worry about it. That's coming up. One of them, I think the last one you said before you left was self-report. What do you mean by that? So uh, the self-report would be things that Ms. Heard indicated to me specifically. Um, so there were a couple of things characteristics that she noted in her self-report that were consistent with these personality disorders. Um, the first was actually my own behavioral observations of her based on her self-report. So one of the hallmark characteristics of histrionic borderline, or sorry, histrionic personality disorder is sort of a overly dramatic presentation. We call this impressionistic speech. So it tends to be very flowery, so it uses a lot what of else? descriptive words like magical, wonderful, and it can go on for quite some time and yet it really lacks any substance. So at the end, you're left wondering what was just said or what the answer is to the actual question. All of the cross-examination. So occurred a number of times. Um, and it also represented the kind the quick shifts you'll see between emotions. So she would suddenly be one way and then she would become very animated or very um, uh, sad. And when people are displaying these emotions with this personality disorder, it, there's a sense of shallowness to it. People who are observing them will feel like uh, it's almost play acting and they might not be able to put their finger on it. But part of it is which because is what of the, chat has the been rapidness saying for days. with which the person can switch emotions and also the lack of substance. They don't really refer to, I feel this way. They might describe emotions, they might describe events, but very rarely, and I Ms. Heard did not say, I feel vulnerable. She never really indicated a vulnerable feeling of her own. Then the substance of she's herself report. So when I was asking her information about her history. We're, we're gonna uh, ask more about that later. I was just trying to get a sense of what a self-report was. Oh, okay. Um, 
what psychological tests did you perform? Okay, so psychological tests, I, uh, I'll just go in order. So first of all, I asked her a couple questions from something called the mini mental status exam. That's really just a fancy way of saying that I wanted to make sure that she was alert and oriented to, we call it person, place, and time. That means she knew who she was, she knew who I was, Alert she knew where we were, four. and she knew the where date. Where are all my medical that professionals makes, in the that chat? That way I can ensure that she's able to participate in the evaluation and understand you know who what's you are? happening. Do you know where you are? I then um, administered something called the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory 2. The 2 means that it's the second edition. And this is something we call an objective measure. So um, it uh, asks... 567 questions yes, she or statements she asked the, the question either agrees or disagrees with them Friendly. how much the statement represents them and this test has been around since 1943 there are more than 10,000 studies showing that That's it is appropriate for determining somebody's personality traits it measures all of those things I sort of mentioned how a person thinks feels and behaves in multiple different aspects of their lives it also measures very accurately um, any signs of mental illness or dysfunction and the reason I also really like this test whenever you're using a test for an evaluation that's going to be used in a forensic setting people have a lot of incentive to present themselves in a way that's going to benefit their case and they may want to look like they're sicker than they really are. They may want to look much healthier than they really are. And some of those um, incentives, they may not even realize that they're intending to do that. So it can be conscience, conscious or unconscious, but you really need to have a test that can check for that. And the MMPI-2 has a set of validity scales, we call them. These are scales that measure really the truthfulness and accuracy with which a person is approaching the test. And these, te these scales on this particular test have been so well researched over many decades that they've become very nuanced and they can tell us a lot about if somebody's, for instance, exaggerating, are they elevating one of the scales that shows that they're exaggerating on purpose? Are they exaggerating in a manner that's more like a cry for help? Are they exaggerating in a manner that's clever and sophisticated or more obvious? And then the same exact thing goes for trying to minimize symptoms. We have a number of scales that can show us all the different, if somebody's trying to say they're the most wonderful person on earth, or if they're just trying to deny problems, and if they're doing that again in a very clever way or more of an obvious huh. way. So that test was my choice for this case. There's one other reason I'd like to add is that part of my evaluation was uh, one of the reasons was to assess whether Ms. Hurd has post-traumatic stress disorder, which I told you about earlier, um, as a result of the incidents that she's alleged occurred by Mr. Depp. And that's a really that's tough fair. disorder to find out if somebody's faking it or not. It's one of the most easily faked disorders. Most of us know what it feels like to feel anxious. And a lot of people have seen war movies and movies that depict somebody having PTSD. And in fact, some research has shown that if you give someone a diagnostic checklist and said, show that you have PTSD, they can do it 96% of the time, just someone on the street. So you really need a test that's very sensitive to that. And the MMPI-2 has been shown in multiple studies to be excellent at detecting those attempts. Okay. You keep using MMPI-2. That's the abbreviation that you folks use for that you the, you people I'm sorry if i hadn't said that that's the minnesota multiphasic personality inventory. she did say it counsel she said uh, it when she started what other thanks uh, why don't you listen to her testing did you perform so i know also He's performed the clinician today, administered Beach. ptsd scale dash oh, five and that dash up. five links it to the diagnosis for ptsd in our current diagnostic manual the fifth version um, to do that test, you first administer something called the life events checklist and the life events checklist. Both of these tests, by the way, Sorry. were developed by the National Center for that PTSD was me. with the Department of Veterans Affairs. But the life events checklist lists 16 different very stressful life events that people can go through that are often can be associated with developing PTSD. And then it also has a 17th item that you can fill in if you feel like you've been through something really difficult that wasn't included. 
Now, I like no, to me. also add something called the Life Events Checklist 5 interview, which digs a little bit deeper into the person's childhood as well to find out if they what sort of there's so many different things that can be difficult growing up. And also, it's very important that you have the person determine which of the events they've listed. Let's say they have a number of different types of traumas. Which one do they feel like was the most traumatic this is hard. for them? Which exactly. one still Testimony causes to them to feel her, distressed I'm sure. when they talk about it? And sometimes they can't just identify one. And then that has a that leads to your next decision. So if they have multiple different similar types of events, like seeing combat, then you might use that as the worst one, the multiple similar. So that too. looks like we don't know uh, who this dude is. You describe an anchor, we call it, to do the testing. And we would maybe describe the anchor as the worst of my combat experience. Okay. Now, if somebody had multiple different traumas from different times in their life, like childhood abuse, and then went to combat and had some horrible things happen there, you would do the clinician administered PTSD scale test, the one that comes after. You do one for the childhood event and a separate one for the adult. She's event. doing a very good job of Just taking somewhat scientific testimony and keeping PTSD it interesting for the jury to understand and distilling it down. It does. We'll call it the CAPS 5. That, that's in a way that people can down. understand. She's okay. doing a really, really good job um, with that. How common is the use of the MPPI, MMPI 2 in your profession? The MMPI-2 is actually the most commonly used assessment worldwide by mental health professionals and in forensic settings for the court. Janice, I think because I used it for that purpose and for its you excellent are having validity all of your mental health on display across genders, across It'd be hard ethnicities, for, anybody. Um, for different reasons. And um, when I keep saying validity, by the way, what I mean is accuracy or uh, and I'll try to work that in, <laughs> but then also for She's detecting the accuracy with which a person reports PTSD. Okay. Um, is that scaled in some way? I'm sorry, what was that? Do, does that make use of a scale in some way? He's clearly the brought MMPI in because he's do, used do to doing medical expert testimony. Yes. And that's why there's he's there. actually a combination of scales you want to look for. You would never make the diagnosis just based on one scale alone or even on the test alone. You'd integrate other data. How For those of you, you that want to watch without commentary, and, this is streaming and, and on multiple platforms all across I the internet. I provided interwebs. her the test. I'm using on this an for iPad. fair use for commentary. She essentially, had her own little desk area and then an iPad. She hits start. It provides her with the instructions, and then the it gives her 567 statements in order. For each one, she taps true or false. What I always use focus on tests like that. The results of the MMPI too. That's cumulative. Quite a bit. I um, I wrote up a 25-page interpretation outline. Um, wow. It has numerous, numerous scales. So one of the reasons I like this measure so much is that it can tell you so much about multiple different traits and tendencies and mental issues. Um, one of the primary things I learned was that um, she had a very... A uh, sophisticated way of minimizing any personal problems. Um, Not her fault. I also learned that she tends to, uh, well, there were a number of characteristics that were consistent with the eventual diagnoses, but um, some of the primary characteristics, and I'm going to try to condense 25 pages here, <laughs> were Please. essentially um, externalization of blame. Uh, tending to have a lot of inner hostility that is attempted to be controlled, um, a tendency to be very self-righteous, but to also deny that self-righteousness and to judge others um, critically uh, against these sort of high standards for moral value, but also to deny doing that. Essentially, to, to claim that one is uh, uh, very non-judgmental and accepting and yet very full of rage, really. And um, and these aren't facts, but the, her scores essentially correlated. Yeah, but so they they've all heard the audio. Consistent with other people who obtain these scores, who have been shown through many, many. They've many all heard the audio to have these very specific traits. So externalization of blame, um, a lot of inner anger and hostility. Sometimes that anger among these groups with similar scores 
these people might have that anger kind of explode out at times. They tend to be very passive aggressive. They may be self-indulgent, very self-centered. Um, they uh, could use manipulation tactics to try to get their needs met, very needy of attention, acceptance, yeah. approval. Um, this, they they've tend heard. to uh, distance people who are close to them. Initially, they may seem very charming. They're very socially sophisticated, actually. That was a major component on there. Um, they have a capacity to kind of offer some of their faults, but uh, in a way, but only the ones that people think of lightly and can all relate to. And like, so, oh, I'm so they can present as I very fair and balanced, but in actuality, they really might uh, uh, be very judgmental of others and unaware of problems in their behavior and their thinking. The timing so of this witness is uh, very, uh, very uh, strong uh, for Depp's team by, because by the, the jury IPS. can probably do what we're doing and say, so oh, I've seen this pattern. Test, I've heard this audio. You can have it scored and this by the timing is great. Um, it's a very, very complex test to interpret. They're still but talking about right diagnostics. Away, you get a list of what's called critical items. And these are just some, uh, a couple of the items, the statements that are presented that are more um, clearly symptom based. And I always follow up with the examinee. Some of these might have to do And for with those suicide. of you in the chat some that are saying that this reminds you of people in your you life, just like to get a little bit if more it is triggering, we will timestamp this so you can jump back in later. Tell you this is gonna be the rest of the day. Interview with them and that they have no symptoms. And then when they take the test, it says that they're having trouble sleeping or they struggle with nausea all the time or they feel very anxious. And so you, you want to follow up on that. Okay. Uh, the explosive anger type? is strong testimony. A code type. Let me uh, think of how to explain this very, very simply. So the main scales, and I keep referring to scales, these are just... Uh, the main scores that come up on this test, we um, can refer to them as codes. And when I was saying that Ms. Hurd's scores could be compared to certain groups of people that had been researched before to obtain similar scores, the research has shown that this certain is very people good will expert have testimony. certain scores that kind of spike on this, okay? And so all of those traits that I were descri was describing, those are traits that are found in these code types. So it means that Teresa, number yes. two, score number Depp's two was team plans high, out the order of witnesses, six was and they've high. done a brilliant and job so at it. And so if we have those two scores were both high. Code types are not super two, relevant for our purposes. Type. And what these code, code types. Type, what code type was misheard? Don't cut her off. Ms. Heard had the clearest code type was three, six, but then she also had some other code types that were less significant. What? What the fuck does that mean? With a three, six code type. <laughs> he asked that better better than I did. What characteristics are associated me? So, so um, a three, what? six code type, a lot of that anger is expressed in this code type. Um, there can be actually a lot of cruelty, uh, usually with Oof. people who are less powerful. Uh, actually, when you see this code type, you want to, if you can, to follow up with subordinates co-workers, people who may have observed their behavior more closely. Depp described her as cruel multiple times. The 3 type is very concerned with their image, um, very attention-seeking, uh, very prone to externalizing blame to a point where uh, it's unclear whether they can even admit to themselves that they do they have responsibility it. in certain areas. Uh, lot of suppressed and denied anger, but the anger is very present, will explode out, and a lot of issues in their close relationships. Diana, great question. Yes, when How she's looking over to this side of the screen, she's looking at the jury and explaining to them. She's great, and she's doing a very good job of explaining well, this to the jury. Um, this might be an appropriate time to describe a little bit about these personality disorders, because I think what you'll hear is that there's a lot of consistency there. Uh, so borderline personality disorder is a disorder of stability. It's instability and it's instability in personal it's relationships. Chasing. It's instability in their emotions. It's instability in their behavior and it's instability in their sense of self and their identity. And that instability is really driven by this underlying terror of abandonment. So 
one of the key features also of this disorder, and you, isn't that what we've heard all of it over is like pistons of testimony an engine for the last four days, firing off and igniting one another. But when somebody is afraid of being abandoned by their partner or by anybody else in their environment, and they have this disorder, they'll make desperate attempts to Her prevent team that talked from about happening. This. And their marital and counselor talked about could this. Be physical aggression, it could be threatening, it could be harming themselves. But these are behaviors that are usually very extreme and very concerning to the people around them. Um, uh, the anger is typically what, sadly, it's counteractive, right? So the thing these people fear most is being abandoned. But over time, the anger, the explosive blow up anger people run that away. they show when somebody is uh, needing space or when somebody is really not doing anything wrong, because a lot of times they read into things that they perceive as being a slight to them or being somebody intending to harm them that actually isn't happening. They'll exaggerate it um, and they'll explode. They'll react in this heightened manner that is just exhausting for their partners. Oftentimes their partners will uh, try to make them happy at first and really allow themselves to be a punching bag, thinking that they can somehow solve this problem. Johnny Depp's audio, just Somehow cut they me, can make this better. Just, and eventually it just, just overwhelms them. Histrionic personality disorder is well, very Before similar. we move on. To okay. That, um, She's explaining. Are you familiar explaining. with the term emotional reactivity? And I she's am. allowed what to explain that? because she's an expert. So and he's allowed to lead because is she's an expert. Very common in the diagnosis. So essentially, uh, like I said, there's instability in emotions. People with borderline personality disorder are often misdiagnosed as having bipolar disorder because they can be up and down. They can look very depressed and they can look very elated. But these changes are happening within a matter of hours. Somebody with bipolar disorder, these are this is a clinical depression lasting days weeks, a clinical mania where sometimes they even need to be hospitalized because they're so grandiose. They clear out their bank account and go to Vegas and spend it all. They're acting in some very bizarre ways. You With, guys remember, uh, she's testifying about mental health, but we are not here to diagnose constantly. the smirch, and again, disparage. This hypersensitivity so just be mindful be slighted or that feeling people offended. have very real experiences really with this. The fear that if you're offended or slighted for themselves, the for their family members, and this can be very hard for everyone or to listen if somebody to. Shows it's up really to tremendously dinner, sad. Two late, that it is, might it be explains a lot, you. but it's very sad. And it's not as if the borderline is considering themselves abandoned in that moment, but they just know that they have this overwhelming emotion and there are no attempts to control that emotion. There's no, there are no attempts to regulate it. So if they're in the middle of the restaurant and they feel offended, they're going to start the fight. Uh, people are going to see it or they might just start crying or break down, but they'll make a lot of accusations. And that reactivity is when you're going to just, you're going to see a lot of this escalation, the bizarre behavior. They can react violently. They can react aggressively. They will often physically prevent their partner Thanks, from trying to, We're gonna go with that. their partner wants Emily to get space the for all of this intense expert. emotion. And oftentimes they will uh, be abusive to their partners in these situations. Sometimes they'll physically restrain them from leaving and become injured that way. But also people with borderline personality disorder, it seems to be a predictive factor for women who implement violence against their partner. And one of the most common tactics that they'll use is actually physically assaulting and then getting harmed themselves. But mostly um, we call this administrative violence. So essentially this is saying that they'll make threats using the legal system. So um, Oof. they might say that they are going to file a restraining order or claim abuse, or they might do these things. And we've heard that audio to essentially yesterday. Try to keep their partner from leaving. In the moment, again, they're not consciously thinking, I'm going to keep my partner from leaving right now. They're just thinking, I can't stand this. I hate my partner. They went from idealizing to suddenly devaluing because of the hurt. And they'll do anything to express that big emotion of anger. This ties in. Approach 
All right. Yes, sir. Why are you approaching? You should know what's coming next. This ties in so much to the testimony we've heard so far from Depp's team. The timing of this particular expert was very good. We've had the two house managers now testifying that Amber initiated fights. We've had Depp testifying that Amber initiated fights. We heard their marital counselor say that she would initiate fights to keep him from leaving, to keep him to stay. And now we've got another expert saying that when you act in this way and initiate violence, they can then be hurt themselves and restraining, which was Depp's testimony when she was coming for him and she said he headbutted her. His testimony was, I was trying to stop her from assaulting me and our, we bumped heads. So this I don't think is the last witness. I think we're going to have police officer testimony, but I think timing this before the police officer testimony makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm also looking at the time. We're at 1210, so we're going to probably break for lunch soon um, because it explains why things are being done to the jury, and the jury's now able to think back to the audio they've heard over the last number of days with Depp's testimony and make this make sense. So they're able to connect those two versus okay. her testifying um, first and them not having context. It's a very, very uh, strong choice that they brought her in now. Reactivity. Uh, what, if any, emotional reactivity did you uh, observe in your review? And let's do this one at a time. Okay. So there were uh, a couple Carol, indications. Carol, Amber has to, to testify. Uh, First, she knew this was coming uh, in. They knew this doctor I was testifying. Sort of think about they knew this was happening. Records, so they promised that she was testifying. She has uh, to. Doctor, um, what is Amber so confused? Cohen about? Connells. Am I getting the name right? I feel like for some reason in my mind I might have just reversed it. Uh, but Doctor Cohen's records, I did reverse it. Uh, he actually refers to this reactivity quite a bit and to Ms. Hurd's temper, and that that temper it's often branded or being hot headed is really characteristic uh, borderline personality disorder, um, as is their ch very charming, personable nature. It's, it's, this is a disorder of contradictions. Uh, in Nurse Filotti's notes, um, she had, I thought there was something interesting. She references a night when they're out to dinner, I believe in London, and she provided positive reinforcement to Ms. Hurd because Ms. Hurd had been uh, disappointed by a mistake made by the server, and it sort of references how previously she might have criticized the server and be, become upset by that, um, and that she didn't this time, and so that that had been some a sort of a, a step forward. Uh, and uh, there was also an indication, actually, in Dr. Zoom Hughes's. Back in on, zoom uh, back Dr. In. Hughes I is know. a forensic psychologist who had been appointed by Ms. Hurd to conduct as an evaluation as well. In Ms. Hughes's interview of Ms. Hurd, Ms. Hurd disclosed that she had cut her arm in the past, which is a typical reactive type thing somebody with this diagnosis can do. It's one we of the We heard symptoms. Ben's testimony yesterday um, about the arm cuts. And that's sort of all I can think of top of my mind from the treatment records. Moving into um, some of the declarations um, or deposition testimony, what struck me was Ms. Raquel Pennington's testimony. Um, she's a former friend of Ms. Hurd's. A.K. Braxy. And she indicated, she told everyone. a story about, I suppose, they were shopping this for is their friend Thanksgiving Rocky. accoutrements, something to prepare for Thanksgiving. So she talked to and her Ms. friends Hurd too, which is huge. struck her in the face, sort of Holy out shit. of the blue, um, which is, I, I thought was interesting because that is Hurts one of those at her lawyers, like, signs of borderline it. personality disorder where if a, if a friend or a loved one isn't meeting your needs in that moment, um, borderline people with borderline personality disorder can be very caring in their relationships. As long as their needs are being met, they feel that their needs should be met when they want them met um, at a specific level. And if they're not, then that anger, that sense of harm causes them to react. So the a lot striking of you yesterday Ms. were Pennington saying from Ms. Pennington's report that heard was giving you like I want it now, Daddy vibes. Pretty consistent. She's describing. And then uh, Ms. Hurd's own self descriptions. Uh, okay, we're going to um, ask you a question about. Sure. Um, Let her go. She's an expert. Ms. Pennington. She can testify uh, this way. Former friend. Of, yes. Of Ms. Hurd. Oh. Is there uh, a relationship between borderline personality disorder and? Uh, intimate relationships? Yes, so uh, so the instability 
definitely translates to their relationships. You'll see relationships start very intensely. People will, uh, somebody with borderline personality disorder perceives the relationship as extremely close. This pattern of I idealizing and devaluing is definitely at play. They do this with wine. their lovers and also with their friends. And so this might be the perfect person, their perfect soulmate friend, perfect soulmate partner, and their engagement That's what in the relationship to, is very alluring, very charming perfect. to the other person. Um, it's not and hearsay because it's so an expert medical testimony. Great. But what occurs is that reality sets in. People are not perfect, even when we have a lot of in common with them. Um, answer this at the break. Whereas most Choose of us can accept somebody as a whole, somebody who has a little bit of flaws and still think this is my great friend who always all constantly running late for dinner. The person with borderline Me, personality disorder, things are in these extremes, this black and white, we call it splitting. And so that person goes from being idealized, the perfect person, to dumpster. They are totally devalued. They dumpster are the fire? worst friend. They don't oh. care anything about me. I have better people around. And They're then the there will be a repair because the person with this disorder does feel remorseful after they have and these the reactions, cycle. angry, tell their friend off. But over time, it wears away at these relationships. And so what you'll usually see is many, many transitions in their friendships over the years. People who have sort of fallen by the wayside, who were really very close knit at one time and then, but there's not a lot of consistency in the long term. You'll also see that with their intimate relationships, many, many relationships, but none that are particularly long term. Uh, how does borderline personality disorder relate to identity issues? So again, that instability also travels toward identity. And when I was describing personality Excellent. earlier, I was talking about this doesn't a little change anything with her daughter. We you have that don't help lose us your know kids who because you have mental health when diagnosis. When you have borderline personality disorder, so that actually is not it something doesn't change you anything other than give context. So, uh, people with this disorder actually take on the identity of the people they're spending time with because it's comforting. It's very uncomfortable to not know who you are. Some people with this disorder will describe a feeling of emptiness oh, really? when no. they feel like she they've been abandoned to that. because now they don't know who they not. are in the world. And so when somebody with this disorder is going through that initial enmeshment phase with new people and they're idealizing them, they often will take on the identities of those people. So they may mimic them in a lot of ways. They might mimic the way they dress, their interests, the way they talk. Um, and for this reason, the people around somebody with this disorder kind of from the outside may feel like, wait, I thought you were this way. Now you're advocating for this and this is your new main interest in life or the thing you're throwing yourself into all completely. Music tastes might change. Hobbies will change the way they dress. The way they okay. dress. Um, in addition to borderline personality disorder, I understand that you uh, diagnosed a, another personality disorder. What's that? And so now into the histrionic, histrionic personality disorder. And these are really two sides of the same coin. Um, they belong to the same cluster. We call these clusters. It's a way to organize personality disorders in that DSM. And this cluster is described as the personality disorders that yes, are Elizabeth, traumatic, erratic, chameleon of sense. and emotional. Okay, so unpredictable, but really having to do with emotions and relationships. They're very similar. Whereas I was saying that borderline personality disorder, a lot of the key features that you're gonna notice are instability. When it comes to histrionic, a lot of the key features are going to be drama it and I shallowness. It bang. it bang Similarly, to with borderline personality disorder, there's yes, this, this, is why he testified under, before her. Uh, this underlying drive of avoiding abandonment. With histrionic personality disorder, that underlying drive is to always be the center of attention. Because if you don't have that attention on you, it feels similarly to borderline personality disorder. You feel pretty empty. Like you don't have that sense of being or of value. Okay. So whereas borderline personality disorder might have more of the visible reactivity, if somebody seems to be leaving That's fascinating. with histrionic personality disorder, what you're going to see is extreme discomfort with not being the center of attention extreme efforts to be the center of attention 
And when they feel that they're not the center of attention, extreme effort you will see to be the center of attention. Things, making up stories to try to get attention, often taking on a victim or princess role. Those two roles in particular are pretty consistent. Seeking caretaking. Borderline personality disorder is similar because with borderline personality disorder, these shifts of identity and the splitting, you might see somebody go from being in the DSM, it describes it as a needy supplicant of help, seeking the perfect caretaker to suddenly being the wow. avenger against injustice or thinking that their partner is a terrible person. With histrionic, what you'll see is somebody who um, wants to be the center of attention, has sort of that impressionistic speech, very flowerly, uh, very enthusiastic, but nothing's really being said. The moment Feels like your the attention we're wears to. away because they're so demanding for attention, that's when they might take the victim role or the princess role and even make up stories. Sometimes those stories are to bolster the victim role. Sometimes those stories are Jordan, just to yes make and them no. look she evaluated and diagnosed Amber. In their mind so, so as an expert, she did diagnose kind of attention that Am her in person, not just from medical Is records. So she diagnosed her in person. Personality disorder so not her treating doctor, but a doctor that worked with her. <laughs> there is, strangely, and this is always one of the trickiest things to talk about. You, I mean, how is that a symptom? But characteristically, people with this disorder are very, very interested in looks. Um, but more importantly, they utilize their looks to get that attention, to get that respect that they're seeking. And so this type of a personality might be flirtatious with everybody. Um, characteristically, they actually couldn't even be subtly, and when I say flirtatious, I'm not talking overtly sexy, but uh, kind of inappropriately flattering. Sometimes they act in a kind of a girlish way to be cute and to a gender attention. Huh. And this will even occur in their therapy relationships as a way to sort of avoid getting negative feedback or criticism. Oftentimes they'll bring the therapist gifts or be distracting um, if they engage in therapy. Uh, because they just don't want any criticism. They want the therapist to like them. I don't want any criticism either. Does the intelligence <laughs> I get of the it. affected person bear on the manner in which these disorders present? Interesting in how that he's bringing up intelligence. Excuse me, I choked a little bit water. Don't choke, uh, doctor, we need you. It, yes, and I think one way to think so about it, slow down, that's Doc, you've probably got a little more accurate lunch. than just intelligence is, in psychology, we would describe this more as sophistication. So street smart, so to speak. Um, the way, for instance, I've had many clients who have borderline personality disorder who are um, messy and really clearly suffering. And um, they might be difficult and all over the place and yell at you in the middle of session, but it's so, uh, uh, it's not tailored. It's so much easier to work with because of that just openness and rawness of it, genuineness. Sometimes you'll have a more sophisticated presentation. There are nine symptoms and only five have to be met. So there are a lot of different combinations and different ways it, it can present. And sometimes you'll have more of a petulant version of this where it really shows when you push the Spoiled button. Spoiled teenage you know, Whoa, what was child. That? So somebody who's really productive, high functioning, successful, and you get to know them and you think they're fantastic because they're so interested in you too. And you might not realize it, but they're mimicking you perfectly. So you're really just kind of falling in love with this new friend who is being you. Um, but then all of a sudden, Depp said she uh, seemed perfect you, know, you say something that they think is testimony. offensive. And you can't, in, even in your wildest thoughts, oh, understand how have that an could have somebody. But their we reaction stand. is so strong that you kind of buy into it. Gosh, maybe I did say something offensive and, and you feel bad about it. So that sophisticated version, they can be a little bit more calculated in the way they present. They tend to kind of hit you where it hurts a little bit more. And they can be actually very, very destructive. What they talked about cruelty and hitting where it hurts with Depp's parenting. Hurts sophistication from her testing. Well, from her testing and from her presentation, she's she was very likable. But her testing in particular um, showed that she approached it in a manner that, uh, remember I told you about those, those scales that are pretty neat. 
Um, that are pretty neat. She approached Those it in a manner that very clearly minimized any psychological dysfunction. Um, not just that, but really presented herself as free of any problems. And she did so in a way that was very, um, very sophisticated, not obvious, um, by responding to questions that most people might not notice. Acting would, was the right profession for her. Trying to detect that. To meet her own needs. Um, there are over 24,000 uh, of you, you here across that? platforms. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So that's based on I appreciate a the support. particular scale on the MMPI2 that is designed specifically to detect a type of responding that's a little bit more clever, a little bit more sophisticated, minimizing problems in a way that most lay people probably wouldn't understand, and even providers, very difficult to detect. And Depp talked about recording because he felt like he was crazy in arguments with her you in his direct. That one of the we'll see what Herd's team does with that. Borderline personality disorder is emotional reactivity. How might that present in an intimate relationship? Ashley so saying, I think it nerdy probably love. presents mostly. Uh, or you'd see the bulk of it in intimate relationships because of that regular interaction and the desire for your partner to meet all of your needs, to be the perfect caretaker. Also that um, the hallmark of the disorder with the splitting. So idealizing, devaluing, and the perceiving of all sorts of neutral events as somehow demeaning or disrespectful. Um, it's regular escalations of anger, frustrated complaints, criticisms of your partner. Purple nine fiber but lover. Because yes. Johnny Depp said she loved the same things as him. Disorder. First of all, they're more sensitive to things. They feel distress so. more strongly. And then that distress lasts longer. So these types of blow ups go on it did forever. Hit a million. And it, they're you, very Maxley. cyclic. It feels like you just can't get a resolution. And eventually the partner will try to leave, will want to leave to take a break. It wears them down. And that's when the borderline might explode and act very aggressively or violently to try to prevent them from leaving. KS, okay, yes, I am drinking directly from a pot of coffee. And this this talks about that entire cycle Depp said, I'm trying to leave. She's trying to force me to stay at all costs. Diagnosing Ms. Heard with Chanley uh, from Court TV looks amazing disorders. today in, in pink. Uh, did you formulate a, another I opinion about Ms. Hurd's mental status? Did you formulate yes, so another I'm, opinion? I'm not, there, go ahead. <laughs> ask a better if question, counsel. That is yes, I'm going to now ask. Okay, what yes, was that? I did. Okay, what is it? So, uh, in addition to looking for Ms. Hurd's general mental status, any psychological issues that were present, I very specifically um, was assessing to determine whether post-traumatic stress disorder was present, and it was not. How do you know that? Wow. So first of all, from uh, well, from multiple information sources, right? So I was That's integrating the interview, my review of the data, the case records, other people's testimony, her treatment records. And then I also conducted, in addition to the MMPI-2 and looking at that data, I also conducted wow. uh, the clinician administered wow. PTSD scale, the CAPS-5, which wow. is wow. the gold standard PTSD assessment um, <sighs> developed by the National Center for PTSD, shown to be valid, wow. accurate for use, not just with service members, but also with civilians, like not even with men, their childhood, women, though? all genders, um, and also all ethnicities, and then also specifically for use in a courtroom setting. Wow. How do you conduct the CAPS-5? So the CAPS-5 is a standard interview. I don't have words for that. What that means that. is That's that big it's an interview with very clear questions that are scripted. And you ask those same questions every time you test a person. So because you're doing that, you're actually taking something that would typically be kind of subjective, an interview with somebody, and you're making it more objective. When you ask those same questions in the same way, every time somebody's assessed with this, now you can apply a scoring protocol and actually score their responses. Okay. As a result of applying those protocols, what did you conclude? Ms. Heard did not have PTSD and there were also pretty significant indications that she was grossly exaggerating symptoms of PTSD when asked about them. How did you make that latter conclusion? Wow. So 
one of the strengths of this test, as I mentioned, the important thing about any test used when you're doing an evaluation in forensics is to make sure that the person is responding accurately. And this test does that by not just asking people whether they have a symptom, but asking follow-up questions that draw out very detailed accounts of every single symptom of PTSD. And when you're really familiar with this disorder, which you need to be to administer this test, there are nuances in the way a person will describe their symptoms that have been shown repeatedly to indicate exaggeration or faking. There are also indications wow. when somebody is clearly giving you a genuine response. Wow. Okay. Wow. What, if any, symptoms of PTSD did you observe and Ms. Hurd? So um, there are 20 kind of core symptoms that somebody might can manifest with PTSD. You don't have to have all of them. Um, Ms. Hurd initially said that she had, in the first question, you say, do you ever have this before you get to the more nuanced follow-up questions? When I asked that first question on each item, she initially said, yes, I have that, to 19 of the 20 symptoms. That's not wow. typical even of somebody with the most disabling form of PTSD. Wow, wow, wow. When we eventually sort of dialed it down, she One Sorry, was sleep disturbance. So um, she reported that she has frequent nightmares. Um, another one was that she said that she tends to have a startle response. So if she gets startled or surprised, um, she tends to stay in sort of a hyper startle mode for quite a while. And that's consistent with a couple of things. It can be consistent with PTSD if other criteria are met. It's also consistent with childhood complex trauma, which is something that can occur Sorry, when your brain is forming. If you constantly feel unsafe, if your parents are abusive, um, or if they're not present, if you're neglected, you can develop certain physiological responses that can stay for a long time in your life. So I, I noted that that was, seemed like a, a very genuine, accurate account where she stays in the state of kind of hyper arousal, has a hard time calming down if she gets surprised. You, um, mentioned, you mentioned nightmares as well. Yes. Did she recount for you the, the nature of the nightmares? So they were vague. Uh, Interesting. She indicated that uh, she has recurrent nightmares and that she feels as though she's they being were held vague. down. Um, in there, there was some conflict in that account because even though that could be a PTSD symptom, it is, it is fairly vague, but I still scored it as present. And in her initial treatment with Ms. Or with, I'm sorry, with Dr. Bonnie Jacobs, uh, which I believe started before she began dating Mr. Depp, she had indicated to Dr. Jacobs, according to Dr. Jacobs's notes, that she was having repetitive nightmares back then and that they were related to her childhood trauma. Um, huh. And so that came up several times in the notes. Dr. Jacobs kept mentioning that. Thank you. Okay. What is feigning? Feigning She's gonna is need another bottle of water. Somebody get her a Fiji water bottle. Exaggerating uh, symptoms that aren't present. Does the CAPS-5 control for that? It doesn't necessarily control for it. It can expose it by how drawing out. That, how does that work? Because you're not just simply handing the person a checklist that says, here are all the symptoms of PTSD. Why don't just check off the ones you have, which clearly if you're trying to look like you have PTSD, you would just tick, tick, check tick, them tick, off. Tick, tick. The CAPS-5, because it requires them to describe in detail how they experience the symptom, where it shows up, what it looks like, yes. what sort of examples they can give you. This how testimony many is coming in because of how damaging it is to her case. The last That's the point of this testimony. By the end of each symptom, you've gotten a very good picture of a couple things. One, does it's it not meet just the a checklist? You have to have a symptom? conversation. Are they getting it right? Right? Is this actually the symptom? Wow. Or are they kind of confusing this with something else? 
Number two, are they giving you very vague accounts? Um, are they giving you kind of a stereotyped idea of what the symptom is based on media or movies or something that actually is completely different from genuine experiences of this symptom? Or are they giving you a very genuine, heartfelt, sometimes minimizing, but it's it's ticking all the boxes. Their mannerisms, while they're describing it, the uh, actual very specific, very nuanced, symbolic ways they're describing it. A lot of times um, it smells, it sounds, that all appears in genuine accounts. And it's something that people really get wrong when they're feigning. Um, Interesting. In addition to the, your conclusion that uh, Ms. Very, Curry very, very interesting PTSD, testimony. Did you make a conclusion with respect to her symptoms? Uh, yes, actually I did. So, uh, you know, just because somebody doesn't have PTSD doesn't mean that they weren't harmed psychologically by whatever is being alleged. In this case, Ms. Hurd is alleging that she was psychologically harmed and that she suffered PTSD because of abuse that she alleges occurred by Mr. Depp. So I also, the MMPI too is helpful because it shows you kind of everything, any other symptoms. And then in Ms. Hurd's own self-report and her prior treatment records, I knew that she had uh, reported to me that uh, she had had some other symptoms. So now what becomes really important is determining, and let me clarify one thing here, not so much a diagnosis, but did she start to experience symptoms during the relationship and after? Did they worsen after? Or could these types of symptoms or reports be explained by other factors? A, by feigning, B, by pre-existing conditions, or C, by other stressful life events that might have occurred? Interesting. So the main symptoms that I was looking at didn't meet criteria for PTSD, right? There was also- But she um, said it doesn't you know, mean she's not harmed, evidence which is fair. Emotional dysregulation, emotional disorganization, the shallowness, the dramatic affect. Now, when you have a lot of childhood trauma, you can actually have some similar type presentation in adulthood. There are some differences though, but also that's not something that would have occurred after this relationship. So now I was looking at, are there indications that these types of things that she's described, this transient anxiety, the issues with sleep, were these there prior? So she's and looking, sure enough, was there childhood um, trauma Hurd, that caused her issues? Her self-report stated to me that when she first got to L.A., she was Versus seeking treatment for Johnny her words, blanket anxiety and depression. Um, she also reported that she was taking medications. In general, none of them were helpful. That's actually very typical of borderline personality disorder. Medications typically aren't very helpful for somebody with a disorder. They really need an intensive, lifelong type of therapy, which is not necessarily as relevant to this. Um, but interestingly also, people with borderline personality disorder often respond really positively to um, stimulant medications that are uh, given for ADD or ADHD. And in one of Nurse Filotti's huh. notes, she Amber reported that Ms. Hurd told Adderall. her that none of the medications were working for her except for one provisional, which is often prescribed as a stimulant medication. And I just thought that was interesting and sort of consistent with more of these lifelong and personality Depp's disorders said that aren't necessarily caused that she was taking by his ADHD by meds. any allegations, but That's have been very there and will remain there typically. The other uh, issue, you know, so the anxiety, she had already indicated that it, that had been there prior, but the form of the anxiety. So looking at Dr. Hughes's testing and then also looking at the scores on the MMPI, when you look at all these little combinations of the scores, you can actually learn a lot about, is the anxiety related to an event or is this more a person who tends to be an anxious person regardless of what's Natalie, going on in Natalie, she's a very life. good witness. And somebody might describe them as a worry wart. And the scores, the little combination of scores that she obtained she's also an experienced actually indicated witness. that it was the latter, that her anxiety tends to be separate from events and more like just I'm kind leaning of in. I, and it I comes just, and goes, like but I'm, I'm it, it's more I'm of a leaning trait. closer and closer to the screen because I want to hear I'm her, and I'm sure the jury's way. feeling the same way. <gasps> They're done with direct Maybe examination. We, why don't we go ahead and break uh, for lunch? Go ahead and have our lunch yep. break. It might be a good idea to, to break it up there. 
Okay, I know. I can see you jumping up. All right. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our lunch recess. Just, again, do not do any outside research. Don't discuss the case with anybody, okay? We'll have you back here. Well, y'all, after lunch is going to be explosive on cross, I'm sure, because there's a lot of work for the defense to do. I'm surprised they didn't ask about the medical records. I'm surprised they didn't ask more about the audio recording. Some of that will probably come up on redirect, and that might be a strategy because they know or they can guess what. And again, Dr. Curry, since you're in the middle of your testimony, please do not discuss your testimony with anybody at this time, okay? okay. Right. What Umbridge is going to get into. They can guess what Cross okay. is going to look like. Back right, so you. they'll be back in a little more than an hour. They can imagine what Cross is going to look like, and they will be able to deal with that on redirect. So this afternoon, we might finish out with this doctor. There might not be another witness. It'll be um, cross and then redirect. There could be another witness after, but I think cross will take quite a bit of time with this witness. She is a professional witness, clearly a very um, professional expert and came across very, very well. I'm going to give you my thoughts on takeaway. I've just messed up my screen. Sorry. Uh, uh, of, of the other tech things I haven't messed up. I'm going to give you kind of my thoughts on this witness so far, and then I'm going to answer questions in super chats. I'm going to remind all of you um, that we are not here to you know, disparage someone due to their mental health. This is being used to explain, but also I've seen people in the chat talking about, does this stigmatize mental health? The broader societal implications are fairly irrelevant to the attorneys presenting this case. They are trying to explain this behavior and explain what she shows and explain that she is saying she had PTSD and she is saying that she is a victim of abuse. And this doctor is saying she has a tendency based on these diagnoses to um, not accurately represent those things. And it's testimony that is coming after we saw Depp testify about the things he had experienced, which tie into the things that this doctor is explaining and explaining how they work and why, including stopping from some someone from walking away, needing to be the center of attention, which we saw how much it chafed Depp when he talked about her ambition and this ambition and the over the overwhelming ambition and how that wasn't him, right? That's her personality, not his, but how it didn't sit well with him. And then you've got a doctor coming in saying, yes, the desire, the unyielding desire to be the center of attention, I'm sure um, career ambition would play into that as well as this doctor said. So then we get um, into the talk about feigning and the fact that she was not able to be super specific the way people with PTSD are. This doctor is clearly an expert in PTSD and, and very severe trauma and was able to give a breakdown of how she went through these diagnostic diagnostic test. This is much more than just a checkbox test, she said, and really gave a lot of context to Johnny Depp's testimony. I imagine there will only be a few more witnesses from Depp's side. They might finish out with that this week. We talked about that former friend, Rocky Pennington. So this doctor didn't just rely on Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's relationship, but went and looked at other relationships to see if these patterns were continuing to play out and to see if PTSD or um, traumatic symptoms started prior to Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's relationship and looking back at her past medical history saying, is this coming from childhood or is this coming from this relationship with Johnny Depp? And what they're saying is this is not coming from her relationship with Johnny Depp. This is um, some of her experiences, not PTSD, but some of her trauma is coming from there. And then we're seeing the diagnosis of both um, borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder from this doctor. I'm going to be answering questions. Um, I just, I, I think this is obviously this is damaging testimony to her side of the case and her side of the case is she experienced this. She's traumatized by this. She's fearful of depth. She carried makeup in her purse, the whole relationship and depth saying she blew this out of proportion. She made this up. She was seeking attention and I it was not an abuser. And so the article is defamation because at the end of the day, is the article saying that she was a victim of domestic violence or of domestic abuse or her exact words, is that defamatory to Johnny Depp? And that's what this testimony is getting to the heart of explaining to the jury how this plays out so they can understand the why behind Johnny Depp's team's 
um, position of the case. Why would she do this? Why would anyone do this? Why would someone make this up? This answers all of those whys. So thank you in the chat for understanding the way we do things and not diagnosing others. This doctor is just talking about this case and, you know, we will be getting into it. So, um, Octo said, I want to pick up a book by Dr. Curry. Sadly, none are available yet. I think she's probably busy working and doing the work that she's doing. She seems to run a very busy practice and do quite a lot of work in um, the military and in the veteran communities. Uh, incredible testimony. A very good, again, a very good expert. And I'm going to get to questions. I know there's a lot of them. Renee, earlier in, they were again trying to take the makeup route on cross-examination saying, well, you don't know how much makeup Amber wears. They're going to keep getting into that. She's going to keep banging away at that makeup, man. Umbridge. Have you not been on Twitter or TikTok or social media? Do you know that we know about the makeup like we all know now? Are the attorneys allowed to see what's going on on social media regarding this case? Unlike the witnesses and jurors, yes. And if the attorneys are smart, someone on their team not probably not one of the lawyers, but they should have someone on their team monitoring this or one of the younger lawyers monitoring this. They should absolutely have somebody monitoring social media for sure. What does leading mean? It's the form of the question, the yes, no tight leading form of the question versus an open-ended question. Like, tell me what happened next and tell me about this. Did you see Johnny Depp drink at his wedding is a leading question. Um, did you see Johnny Depp drink on the island? Also kind of a leading question. But did you provision the island? Yes. Oh, so you got wine and things. Well, even that would be leading. Um, who did you see drinking at the wedding? Give me a list. That is the open-ended. When is Amber going to testify? Miklos, I have no idea. I will give you a better estimate after Johnny Depp's team finishes his case in chief. Um, Impish artist, thank you. So we are still in Johnny Depp's case. Once we finish his case, then we get to Amber Heard's case and we'll see how many witnesses they're going to call. Um, Amber Pink, thank you. I am trying to distill this trial as best I can. It was my intention originally just to cover Depp's testimony and Heard's testimony, maybe Elon Musk. And since I am leaving for a conference, I will probably not be streaming uh, the rest of the week, but we will see. I mean, things can pop off, but I will absolutely be watching along with this doctor's testimony later today. I'm fascinated. Julie said, not Amber Heard in the background writing, I hate JD over and over and over. I mean, she's taking notes. This has to be hard for her to sit through. This is not only embarrassing, but it is bringing all of her personal shit out to the world. But she also put that out there by writing the article. So she put her personal shit out to the world, but it's it's got to be hard. Amber and Umbridge are twinning today. Tiffany as they are, and they are. Question, why do attorneys seem so aggressive to the witness? I don't know why that's the style they're going with, but they sound aggressive to me too. The way that they are questioning feels very aggressive to me. Can Johnny get called back when it's Amber's turn? Yes, he could be called as a witness by Amber's team. I don't think that they will, but it is theoretically possible. It's like theoretical physics. It's possible. Question is cross-examining different from presenting the evidence to the court. No cross-examining is, it's a great question. Emmeline or Emma, it, Emma, it's Emily with lots of letters that are in my name, Emily, or maybe just a different order. Um, it is a way of presenting evidence. It's a different style of presenting evidence. The evidence is the answer to the questions. The questions aren't the evidence. It's just a way, a different way of getting to the answers. So no, cross-examination is a part of presenting witness testimony and witness testimony is evidence in court. That was a great question. Thank you for letting me break down Sometimes the basics, we need to back up. Um, Umbridge sounds like she looks down on, on service staff. Umbridge sounds like she looks down on everybody to me. It might just be because she is disdainful of Johnny Depp's side and is really running with everyone on his side is bought and paid for. They're all yes men and they're all just going to cover for this actor who acts appallingly. They are deeply invested in Amber Heard's side of the case and they should be. They're her lawyers. Like that's literally their job is to be deeply invested in her side of the case. Sorry, there is something blowing around outside my window and it's terribly distracting. I have ADHD. You can't just come here and like blow around outside my window. It's, too, it's terribly distracting. It's like a bag. I have no idea where it came from. Um, shining light at my face. So it's, you know, true life. How are all of her yes, no questions not leading? Was person X on the list? Was person A on the list? They are all leading on cross-examination. Leading is the style of question. So yes, they're all leading. And yes, that's proper. 
I like her as much as I like Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter. Yep. You're kind of rooting for her to fail. You're like, stop it. Though Umbridge is the smartest lawyer, I think, on this team. She just fucking grates. And that's the thing. She's going to hurt. No, I can't say that. This is my opinion. I think she could hurt her case by turning off the jury with her style of questioning so they don't hear the moments on cross. If there are moments on cross where it's like, did you see though? You're not going to hear those moments because you need to vary your tone and inflection. You start off cross-examination easy. Even if the questions are a little sharp, your tone doesn't have to be. And then if there's these big moments, then you get to, but you know, if you were, you know, your curls are still intact. So if you weren't in the shower, then you would have had to find, you know, the defendant with a gun in her hand to make your story plausible. Isn't that right? Yes. I thought it was her coming through the door. And then you have your very dramatic, legally blonde moment in court. But you don't get that if every fucking thing in your cross-examination is DEFCON red. Isn't it true that there's sun in the Bahamas? Girl. No, everything can't be so dramatic. And I think part of that comes from the fact that civil lawyers do not do as much litigation as criminal lawyers. It's very hard to learn this if you're not out on the field playing the game. This is really like the very overzealous football player who gets to play one game a year um, or one game every three years. They don't go to trial a lot. Criminal lawyers, it's like, it's Tuesday, go to trial. Can there be action against hostile lawyers? No, this is part of the, this is, this is how that, this is how this is. I just don't think it's very effective. Um, if it gets excessive, then the judge would gently admonish them. We saw that once with Rottenborn. So this is getting sassy quick. Huge new fan, Emily. Thank you, Ashley Lee. It's going to, it's going to get real sassy after lunch, I'm sure. Tamara Davis said, imagine Umbridge's wall of kittens is in a frenzy. <laughs> Where were you every second of December? I cannot hear that umbrage after every question. She is, she is. Question, this attorney being aggressive to a witness could hurt Amber's case. It can turn the jury off because I can feel attacked. Can't even imagine how the jury feels. The jury might also feel like they're being scolded or yelled at um, in a way that it's not necessary. If the witness starts being a total asshole and the lawyer starts to get snappy, the jury can be on their side with that going, ew, this witness is out of control. The lawyers were right. But when lawyers come out too hot, it can turn off the jury and, and shut them down, especially if they don't like being yelled at. I do not like being yelled at. Um, it, it, it just, it feels like I'm being scolded and that's why I find her tone so just abrasive. At this point, I might make a better lawyer, <laughs> Alicia. I think a lot of people would have a different style. The sass today is coming off a bit gross. I don't know if you're talking about my sass or her sass, but there's going to be sass. Seems unprofessional for her to clap back at each objection at the same time being wrong. Uh, I can understand that it feels that way. I don't think it's unprofessional. I think it's strategic. I think the clapping back tells the jury what she's looking for, tells the jury what she's thinking, and it gets information out there. Even though that's not evidence, it lets the jury know what she's doing. And I think that it is strategic. I think, yeah, I think it's strategic. I don't think it's unprofessional. It's not the style I prefer, but it's strategic. And the judge didn't cut her off. So the, if the judge wanted to cut her off, she would. Breaking news, Johnny Depp has doors for his bathrooms. Yes. And beads on his closet and sun in the Bahamas. This attorney peeves me. Same. Was the makeup palette even out when she used it? I have a video about that on my Quick Bits channel that will be linked down below that actually hit a million views yesterday. Y'all, the Quick Bits, the Quick Bits video hit a million views uh, two days into it being posted. It's the first video that I've ever had that hit a million views. I was very excited. So that video is out on my Quick Bits channel. If you want to subscribe over there, I've got some videos, some short little Quick Bits that will be coming up there so that you guys can... Um, keep up with what I'm doing and keep up with the stuff that I'm putting out on other platforms, just on this platform. So we're going to just, I'm going to pull it up real quick and share the screen in case you want to go do it, but it will be also linked down below. Oh, it's at like 1.1 million views. Hey, oh, look at that. So this video over here is the Quick Bits, Quick Bits video from my Quick Bits channel. So if you just go to Emily D. Baker Quick Bits, it's a lot of reels and a few short videos. But yep, uh, 1.1 million views. Emily, that's a new channel. Yes. Is that channel monetized yet? Nope. 
Is that okay? Yes. Because again, the information matters more. And I'm sure some of you at least are here from the QuickBits channel. This is fascinating to me. I found the link for this article and tweeted it out. Are you aware that Mr. Bettany said he never met Amber Heard? When did he say that? 2006? Before the Milani palette? He's like, I don't know a Milani palette and I don't know Amber Heard. When? When? It's just a disingenuous fucking question. Um, I've just found an image of Amber, Paul Bettany, and JD together in an award ceremony. I thought Amber never met him. Yep. The internet The internet is, is quick and wise. The internet makes things happen. Uh, caught in 4K again. I've, um, I just did that one. But yes, thank you. Can Depp's attorneys object to the tone of Heard's lawyers? Nope. You know why? They wouldn't, even if they could, they wouldn't because it helps them. Like Depp's lawyer's job is to help their case. Heard's lawyer's job is to help her case. If Heard's lawyers are pissing off the jury, it's Depp's lawyers to sit down and shut the fuck up and let that train wreck happen. If it's not absolutely improper testimony, if it's not hurting their case if it's just annoying the jury you let that go let them let them tie that up on their own you just let them deal with it it's very hard though to sit on your hands as a lawyer and let it happen because you can object and you want to object but if your witness doesn't need protecting let them do it to themselves you guys we're like just a very few subs away from 20 227 thousand subscribers. I'm blown away. Thank you. So no, that's the, the legal answer is no, they can't object. And the strategic answer is no, they shouldn't object. Um, subham signal. I think I pronounced that right. What I have learned is alcohol is the problem of every relationship. What do you think, Emily? I think people who have problems with alcohol, alcohol can be a problem. I think these attorneys are trying to make fetch happen because they want The reason that they're hammering on whether Johnny Depp was drinking alcohol is because they want to say that he was blacked out functioning, but not remembering, like moving about and doing things, but not remembering these incidents. That is critical to Heard's case that Johnny Depp was so drunk that he couldn't remember these incidents. And Johnny Depp got on the stand for days and said, I'm not afraid of drugs, but I used painkillers. And when I took two painkillers, I passed out asleep. I was not blacked out. I was asleep passed out. But you're not moving around when you're asleep like that. You're not doing things and not remembering. They want to make it seem that he was blacked out. And he kept saying, no, I took painkillers. I fell asleep. I was addicted to painkillers. Didn't really care about alcohol. Didn't really do anything for me. Tried other drugs to numb. He's like, look, I don't, I'm not drinking booze just to get hammered. He's like, I'm not doing this to party. I'm trying to numb. That's why we're going directly to the cocaine. We don't, you know, the alcohol is not doing it. And I believed him. We'll see what else they they testify to, but also with this doctor coming in saying that things are made bigger than they are. Did anyone believe the cross examination when it was like, didn't Amber Heard tell you that you were vomiting in your sleep every night? Does anyone believe that Johnny Depp was vomiting in his sleep every night because he was so inebriated on alcohol and he's still alive? Does anyone believe it? And this doctor is starting to give testimony as to why, but we haven't gotten to Amber Heard's case yet, and we will see her team's response maybe to some of this. Jessica said, thank you so much, Emily. You're welcome. Watching a trial with commentary is literally a dream come true for me. Getting to do a trial with commentary is literally a dream come true for me. So we can all be nerdy and happy together. Attorney's tone and style overshadows any testimony. Yeah. And it shouldn't. The job of a good attorney is to let the testimony shine and to punctuate the important bits. And we saw it brilliantly yesterday with Depp's lawyer that did his direct and redirect examination. And she, if you haven't watched it, I timestamped it in yesterday's afternoon video. She said, how did you respond when Amber Heard said, tell them, Johnny, tell the world, I, Johnny Depp, a man, I too am a victim of domestic violence. And Johnny Depp said, I said, yes, because I am. And she said, I have no further questions. That is how you let the testimony shine. She had a very calm delivery. And the attorney this morning, the female attorney that we haven't seen yet, I don't think, um, the blonde female attorney, had a very clear and crisp style of direct. This, and then this, and then this. And she just built the story. And she did an excellent job. We will see how these attorneys act on cross. Direct is very different. I'm curious to see if Umbridge's style of direct is compassionate or she's going to yell at those witnesses too. Her tone sounds like yelling to me. 
but will Depp's attorneys start having this? <sighs> but your honor, your honor, it's just, it's not, it's just a little bit of hearsay. Like, is that how they're going to act on cross? I don't think so, but we haven't seen it yet. Question, are Amber's lawyers having such a hard time because the facts on their side are bad? Only so much you can do when the client isn't truthful. I, I don't know why they're, they're doing the things that they're doing. I don't, I truly don't know. Always having a loud, intense tone is monotonous. Yes. And you lose the point. It makes everybody tune out. Yes. Bring on the forensic psychologist. This is going to be interesting. And oh, wasn't it though? I stand this intelligent, gorgeous queen of a woman. I do too. I thought she was fantastic. And she testified in gate. I was engaged. I told you I was leaning in. I wanted to hear everything she said. And she's looking at the jury and saying, well, this means this. And we did this because of this and this. She turns and explains to them, that is someone who has testified a lot about difficult things. Some police officers who testify a lot in criminal cases are good at this. Some aren't. But the ones who can help a jury understand tend to do better. And I think the jury is going to be very engaged. Scientific testimony can be boring and people can check out. She kept us engaged. And I imagine she kept the jury engaged, not just with her pacing, but the way she would turn and explain things. She looked like she wasn't speaking down to them. Some people who are very highly educated can't get out of their own way and come across as condescending. She didn't. She came across as, I really want you to understand this. We're all in it together. I liked her very much. With so many qualifications and expertise, but she didn't diagnose Amber Heard as insane. I think insane is maybe an unfair term. There were some diagnoses for Amber Heard for sure. Hey, Emily, you're amazingly fierce. I know um, I know you're gone. How long? Any suggestions on who to watch for commentary while you're gone? You're amazing. And I said, there are a number of law tubers, depending on the flavor of law tube you engage in, different rules in the chat, different styles of commentary, different styles of jokes, and the way that people look at testimony. So your level of spice and and commentary is for your choice. Um, so I know Legal Bites, who should hopefully be at almost 100,000. Alita brings on a panel of attorneys and tends to have a really compassionate conversation with some jokes. Uh, Rakeda, more jokes, <laughs> all jokes, all the jokes. Um, in the chat, a little bit more Thunderdome, but you guys can pick what you want. I think the lead attorney is also streaming today. Um, so there's lots of options for LawTube. And as it gets into the days to come, I will share out the links of who's streaming um, I, I love legal bites of stream. I think she's doing great. Rick Hogue has been over there a lot. Um, Nate, the lawyer has been over there a lot. He's a former criminal prosecutor. So you get a lot of attorneys over there. And again, Rakeda's lawyer 10, look, Rakeda's channel. I enjoy their commentary. They are smart lawyers. However, they do tend to poke fun at people's bodies and things like that. And that doesn't always sit well with me. So it's really your choice on how you, how you wish to view the chat, how you wish to view I always want to give multiple recommendations in case people are like, you said this and I don't care. I don't want to do that. It's your choice. Are expert witnesses seen as more neutral generally, but they're also going to get into who paid you, who hired you. Um, they shouldn't have a bias, but if witnesses always work for one side, like if a witness always works for the defense or always works for the plaintiff, then they can try to say, oh, well, you just want to do this kind of work. You need to continue to have these kind of outcomes. So you continue to get paid by this kind of thing. So we'll see. Um, they're going to address that on cross. How much did you get paid? Why are you doing this? They will absolutely start doing that. Um, Gabby said, as a veteran with PTSD, Gabby, thank you so much for your service. I am so thankful for people like Dr. Curry. People like her have literally saved countless lives, mine included. Gabby, thank you so much again for your service and for sharing. She seems, Dr. Curry seems very, very passionate about the work she does. And it's just really refreshing to see someone who's not, I don't know, she came across as very um, authentic and genuine about her passion for what she does. Thank you so much, Anne. Uh, I think that said Annie. Apologies, I'm going too quick. Would that be paying for her expert opinion? Yes, experts are are paid, and we will get into how she is being paid. But I think the court also appointed her to do Amber Heard's examination, so she might be partly court appointed, but she might also be paid by Depp, and that will come up for sure. Um, is she Johnny Depp's primary doctor or their couples therapist only? I We didn't even get into whether she saw them in couples therapy. We got into her being the expert to review the records and doing the psychological evaluation of her. I don't know if she ever saw them in couples therapy. We heard from their couples counselor earlier on. I don't know if she gave any treatment to Depp at all because she didn't say that she did and they're done with the direct now. 
Can't wait to watch her intelligence stonewall on Burge's abrasiveness. I wonder, like, if you're that expert witness and you're a psychologist, are you sitting there in your head? Because I'm like sitting here talking legal strategy and looking at the strategy of things and how they play out. Is she sitting there diagnosing on Bridge? <laughs> is she reading the room and being like, oh, <laughs> interesting. Like, is that going on in her head? I want to know. Long as this trial has gone without an objection, lol, it's because she's an expert. And so the leading questions are allowed with expert witness. There's some different ways you can do expert testimony. The longer answers, again, are allowed with an expert witness because they have a basis for them. You don't have to keep asking questions quite as much. So yes, that's why it went without objection because she's a professional witness. She knows what she can and can't say. Your commentary on this case is amazing. Thank you. It's keeping my ADHD brain on track as I'm doing my own trial prep. Thank you, Emily. Um, bah Highland, I'm sure it's hard to listen to this trial and prep your own trial, but aren't we all glad we're not in this trial and we're just getting to watch it? Um, Amber seems pissed. Brittany Amber did seem pissed, and she's probably also very uncomfortable. Um, it's only case. Cleo said being mentally ill is not an excuse to act like a jackass. Pete Davidson, it's true. Um, it's Amber Heard's responsibility once she has the information of her diagnosis to choose how to deal with her diagnosis. Um, yeah, that's on her. Reminder, those with PDs are more likely to be abused than to abuse, and PDs are responses to trauma. That said, anyone can be abusive, PD or not. Thank you so much, Vey. Super sticker, thank you. We're going to keep going. And then I'm going to go back into the chat and get some questions. Make sure you mark them with questions. I'm going to try to switch back and forth. Why is she allowed to argue about the objections? Because the judge didn't cut her off and the attorney didn't say, Your Honor, can we approach? And then approach and say, counsel's speaking her objections um, because she can, really. Definitely important, critical, not to say that BPD equals bad. I have multiple female friends with BPD and those I know try incredibly hard to manage their emotions and triggers. And that is very fair. That's not relevant to the trial. I think that's very relevant to the conversation we are having outside of the courtroom, though. Absolutely. People are responsible for their behavior. And when you know what's triggering your behavior, you can act in a different way. Um, thank you for your compassion, Emily. You're welcome. I mean, there's no reason not to be compassionate. Understanding people helps us move forward. And understanding why people act the way they do helps us help ourselves and help them. Thank you for your commentary. You're welcome. Um, if well explained, Dr. Curry can reduce the stigma. I hope so. I hope it is seen as her just explaining what was happening. Question, would Amber have been given this diagnosis before the testimony? Oh, yes. Um, phew, tough. Love you. Thank you. Yeah, she would have gotten all of those reports that the doctor talked about. She would have had those when they were done. Um, this was all done in what she said, December 2021. So she would have had those early probably early in 2022. Um, but this was done close in time so that Amber's team can't say, well, that's old, but it matters. Cause it, I mean, it goes all the way back to the relationship into, you know, 2016, 2015. Amber brought this on herself. I'm sorry, this is being aired out in court, but she did the same thing to Johnny Depp. And that's, th that's why I've said that this trial feels more like mutually assured destruction. Um, Milzy, again, the shoes in your profile pick always bring me joy. They, they just make me so fucking happy. I love them and they give me smiles and there are clouds and rainbows and I fucking love them. This is the first time I've felt really awful for Amber. I feel for her too. And I think it's okay to be empathetic to somebody and be like, this must be a shit way to live. This must be really hard for her, but also what she did is not okay. Both things can be true. Uh, my BFF, my BFF and I love the show. Can you say hi to sky sky and death? Hello. Thank you. I hope you're having a great day. Of course I can. Thank you for the super sticker, Emily. Um, for your flight wife. <laughs> Spez, thank you. That's tremendously kind. Thanks for all this. Feels like watching with friends. It feels like that for me too, just so you know. Like it feels like that for me too. Um, are you streaming after lunch? No, I am not. When, I, when I'm done, I'm done here for the day. Question, were you surprised with Dr. Kipper and the nurse's testimony? To me, it felt like they were covering their own butts. Uh, medical doctors tend to do that a little bit, but yes. Um, if Amber lied to her lawyers and they found out what's going to happen, they're going to have to deal with that with their client. I mean, have you guys been watching The Dropout on Hulu? There's a moment where the uh, uh, actor playing David Boyce sat down and was like, now's the time to tell me everything. And Amanda Seyfried playing Elizabeth Holmes is like, I've told you everything. The lawyers can only do so much. <clears throat> 
And if Amber Heard was not 100% upfront with her lawyers, it will bite all of them. But there's not much they can do about it. She's the one paying them. And uh, wouldn't be the first time clients didn't tell their lawyers everything. Their lawyers say, you have to tell me everything. Doesn't mean people will. Question, what strategy do you think Amber Heard's, Amber, <sighs> Amber Heard's team will use on Cross? Love your commentary. Um, I think they will go bias. I think they will go the bias route and the, well, is it possible that you didn't have enough time to diagnose her? Didn't you diagnose everybody? That kind of stuff. So we'll see. Um, unless she has any literature, if this doctor has any literature that's unflattering to her or positions she's taken, they'll bring that up too. We'll just have to see. I think they're just going to come in hot and yell a lot though. Can Amber Heard get ahead of this doctor's cross by showing that she herself both felt and believed it happened and thus not strictly defamation? Yes, Rusty, that is an excellent point. And this, they, if they're smart, they will use cross for this. Oh, you're telling me all of this and this is how she acted. Did she believe she was abused? So not having knowledge of its falsity would be the smart strategy here. Don't fillet the doctor. Use the doctor to your advantage would be a very good strategy. I don't know if that the, the direction they're going to go. And Amber Heard might say, burn this to the ground. Like we're done. Like undo this. But if they were smart, this is a very solid strategy to say, okay, so she believed all of this happened to her. Like she believed, she believed she was a victim. She believed she had been subject to abuse. And if she believed it, it cannot be knowingly and maliciously false. We'll see if they do it. We'll see if they do it. You guys, thank you for subscribing. I didn't mean to say Amber Heard. It just fucking happened. I don't know what happened. I was trying to say Amber Heard too fast. I, I truly, that was just, that was hello. Hello, Emily. Have you been spending too much time on Twitter? Yep. 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 I have been. Um, so yes, it would be a good tactic. We'll see what they do. I don't know if they'll be able to, I don't know if they'll be able to rein themselves in. Court's coming back at 150, uh, did she say 150 or 115 Eastern? But we're going to finish up super chats and questions real quick. And um, yeah, and we'll go with that. So I've been spending too much time on the internet. Thank you for the super sticker. Um, living sweetly, mental illness doesn't evaporate the consequences of actions. The person is accountable even if they are unintentionally harmful. Mental illness isn't an excuse for problematic behavior. I agree with you. The only tack that that might be true is in defamation. If they really believe what they were saying, then they're not saying, strictly legally speaking, they're not saying it falsely. They're saying what they believed happened. Um, Vamp Faye, this woman makes me want to gouge my eardrums out. She's obnoxious AF. Thanks for doing this, Emily. We really appreciate it. I agree. I feel the same way about Umbridge. Um, Dijon, thank you. Or Dijin. Uh, TNAC said, good morning, Emily. What are your thoughts on the credibility of this witness? Let me see what time this came in. That came in really early this morning. Sorry, we are, I'm very far behind because we've been talking. Um, I thought the Island Keeper seemed credible. I mean, there wasn't a ton there. Did she maybe downplay whether or not Johnny Depp had fallen out of a hammock and was passed out face down on the beach? I don't know. At the end of the day, does it really matter? She testified to what she saw on the island and that he had gotten hit in the face uh, with the canner. She saw the injuries to that. So. I think it was fine. Uh, Kidra, thank you. Can you address HIPAA? I assume since the eval is specifically for the case to find any diagnosis, that would explain Amber Heard's behavior. It's irrelevant. Yeah, HIPAA is irrelevant. In this case, everything's been agreed to be released in court and signed to be released in court. And HIPAA waivers have been signed by the parties and the court has ordered waivers to be signed by the parties. All of that was dealt with pre-trial. Um, Cindy Thomas, thank you towards coffee and airplane Wi-Fi. Thank you for covering and the mods for writing so long. The mods have been the real MVPs here. Thank you so much because they help keep the chat law nerd specific. And when we have, you know, 23, 24,000 people here, um, we are also welcoming a lot of new law nerds who are like, wait, wait, what's happening? No caps. Yes. It's hard on dyslexic Emily. <laughs> um, how are they able to discuss her medical background publicly in court? Is it because it's relevant? It's because it's relevant. It's been signed to, it's been agreed to. And at the end of the day, um, it's at issue. Laura Flint said, this feels, this just feels good because it explains so much and hopefully it will actually result in help and compassion for both parties. I hope so too. Like when we say mutually assured destruction, this case is a lot of that. 
Um, looks like the course of uh, looks like course of confinement. Amber Heard needed to have Johnny Depp around, and feelings of anxiety shouldn't be an excuse for volatile behavior. I think they're an explanation, not an excuse, but I think it's an explanation. And it also bolsters what the marital counselor said with they would get into a fight, Johnny would want to leave, and it would flip Amber out sideways that he was leaving and she would go to lengths to make him stay and start fights to make him stay. And that marital therapist said start physical fights to make him stay. And this doctor is just backing that up. So even if the um, even if Amber Heard's team tries to kind of undercut this doctor. It also goes in line with all the other testimony we've heard. Remember, a trial is, I used the puzzle analogy yesterday, a trial is like a puzzle. And you've got the picture on the box and that's your opening, but then you've got all these random pieces that you've got to gather. So each piece of testimony is a piece of this puzzle that the jury then has to go back in the jury room together with 12 people and try to piece together and, and see what they come out with. Um, MM said, I was misdiagnosed BPD. So glad I really have CPTSD and complex PTSD is again, a complex disorder. And I'm glad that you were able to find the right diagnosis. It helps find the right treatment. Marilyn Martinez said, I know this is off topic to this live, but have you seen the Megan the Stallion interview on CBS and how it could affect the Tory Lanez case? I have not had a chance to watch it yet. Um, I've not had a chance to watch it yet. I will say as far as uh, victims of crime giving interviews, hopefully it is consistent with police statements. I have no reason to believe it's not, but that's the only place it could become a problem for Megan the Stallion. But I, I do want to watch it. Is Kathleen Zellner on Johnny Depp's law team? I have no idea. I know that she was admitted pro hoc vice. I think there was something. I see my husband looking at me. Yes, Dr. B. We don't need to leave for the airport just yet. I, I'm almost unpacking. I, I'm Dr. B's like, don't we still have to pack? I'm like, I do have to throw some more things in a suitcase. I'm almost, I'm, I swear I'm almost done. Um, 21,000 Leonard, say hello. Check back with me in like 10 minutes. <laughs> Dr. B's like, we have to go to the airport. Yes, we do. Um, so is Dr. Curry still testifying? Yes. After lunch, it'll be cross. Um, the nuance take, love your content. Emily just wanted to say, if anyone reading this knows someone or has BPHD, HPD, or any other uh, mental health diagnosis, you deserve to live a happy life and you can have healthy, fulfilling relationships. Yes. And I saw so many of you in the chat saying, oh my God, this sounds like my fill in the blank. Sometimes having context for things can help. I mean, um, my, my dear friend, Warren, who I get to see in like a day, uh, who is in the chat is Octonation, the world's largest octopus fan club. We were just having a conversation in the car. He's like, no, it's time blindness. And I'm like, wait, what? There's a name for the fact that time passes and I have no idea that they, they call it something. And so even with my dyslexia and my ADHD, I'm still learning more and more and it helps me better cope, but it also helps me explain myself better when I'm not coping. And my husband's like, you said it would take you 10 minutes. And I'm like, I forgot to set a timer and I can't feel time passing. Sorry. Um, she's doing great with her words. Love your channel, Emily. Thank you. I thought this witness was fantastic. Thank you, Dorinda, for the super sticker. I cannot get over this lady's hair. It's so distracting. She just wake up and went to court. Jen, I I loved her hair. I thought it was very, it was very on track for expert witnesses for me, but the jury might be distracted. But it was very much the opposite of Amber Heard's perfectly coiffed hair. And I kind of loved that. Like I said, Emily, your coverage of this case is the only thing getting me through 1L finals. Thank you, Queen. You're welcome, Lex. Good luck with your 1L finals. I drank a lot of vanilla Stoli after my 1L finals. Like a, like a lot. Yeah. I hope you have a fun thing to do this summer. Um, I worked at the DA's office over my 1L. It was illuminating. Um, boops and stuff said the therapist needs to rule out any other diagnoses before making a diagnosis. Also the symptoms of BBD change and lessen or increase over time. And that is all proper for the cross-examination. Did Amber Heard get tested before the MMPI three came out? Her, I have no idea. Um, she gave the timing Heard was tested in December, 2021. Thank you for the compliment, Alejandra. I appreciate that. Uh, Dorinda said registered nurse here. Dr. Curry is a legend. I appreciate your sensitivity towards mental health topics and I feel bad for both of them. I feel bad, but support Johnny. I feel bad for both. I feel tremendously bad for both of them. Um, but yeah, no, there's, I don't think there's any reason not to be mindful. Like, I, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me to not be mindful of something that, um, 
you know, isn't, isn't somebody's fault. Like it's not Amber Heard's fault. Her behavior is her fault, but also she's dealing with a lot. Like she's dealing with a lot too. So there is room for compassion, even though the behavior that resulted is not okay. And that's why we're in court. Um, I knew someone with uncontrolled BPD once she faked her own suicide. It was a mess. I don't doubt that. And we've heard comments where Amber Heard threatened to self-harm. I'm sure more of that will come up. A mental health reminder, she is describing very specific diagnosed issues, not all people with BPD or histrionic. Correct. She is not. She is discussing this patient in this case, in this context. Um, Gabby Narufan Narufan said, I have uh, NPD, narcissistic personality disorder. It's absolutely terrible to keep friends or significant others. It's a lonely journey. Gabby, I'm sorry for that. And I hope that you find some support here in the Lawner community as we talk about all this stuff. And I wish you all of the best as you are on that journey. You are not alone. Zachary said, the more that Dr. Curry speaks, the more we realize just her brilliant, how her brilliant, her witness timing. Yes, her depth witness timing has been strategic and very good. Like you have been saying, it's perfect. It is. Um, And that's something that I don't know if you're just watching this trial, if you take away the timing of these witnesses and how good they are. This case, Catalyst for Healing for Many People, RG, I hope so understanding is the first step. Dr. Curry's testimony plus Emily's commentary equals me having much more compassion for others. That is always a good thing. It's what I say. Look, we need to understand and try to learn about each other. Um, Switchback Emmett said, she's also explaining my mother-in-law that movie was my life, but without the the extravagant money, Amber Heard was so jealous of Johnny Depp's two day movie parties. It's, we got that testimony. Um, Switchback said, what was up with the knife? Johnny deserves his entire wine collection back, which allegedly her friends drank at all the whole wine cellar. I guess we haven't really heard about a ton of that yet, but we did hear how much money he spent on wine a little bit with those like 500 plus dollar bottles of wine. Kathy said, Emily, you're amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Gina said, I can hear the cross now. How much did you get paid for being here? That's going to be the first questions. How much of this would you notice if she was wearing hammock or cream? Maybe she'll ask about how much makeup Amber came into the interviews with. Question, why is she describing Amber's behavior and then labeling it with a diagnosis? Why is describing Amber's behavior and then labeling it with a diagnosis more meaningful than all the witness d- witnesses describing the behavior? It gives context, Anastasia, and I don't think she was describing Amber's behavior. She was describing the behavior of these disorders. It's up to the jury to match that behavior to Herd's behavior. She was describing the disorders and she said Herd's been diagnosed with these, but she was not describing Herd's behavior. She was describing the disorders in general, if that helps. Is there an expert that assessed Johnny Depp? No. Uh, Johnny Depp was not required to take a evaluation. No. Johnny Depp did not go through a psych exam. The judge did not order it. He was not um, required to. Why did the courts order a psych eval and could a positive one here for Depp have any effect on the UK issues? No, nothing that happens in this case impacts the UK. Why was it ordered here? Because it's an issue. Why wasn't Johnny Depp's ordered? I'd have to go back and look at the documents. I don't remember. Um, Do you, Amber, her team will challenge the diagnosis? Possibly, or they'll lean into it. We'll see. Uh, Curly haired medic. Thank you. Thank you for the super stickers. Get that woman water. I mean, where is her giant bottle of of Fiji water? She's like crackling that water bottle on the stand. Yes, she needed a different bottle of water. Our closing remarks done after Amber's case. Yeah, after both sides rest, you get closing arguments. They will probably give us a day or a day and a half for closing arguments. It'll be interesting to see. We binged. Did you hear it? We just binged at 227. Did you hear it, Bing? Chat, did you hear it, Bing? Did you hear it, Bing? We're going to Bing together since it, that just... Oh, it binged! It's over. Move your head! Ah! We binged at 227! It doesn't always pick it up um, on the audio. I'm so glad it picked it up on the mic. All right. Thanks, y'all. Dr. Curry giving anyone else Elizabeth shoe vibes chat. You can answer that in the chat. Does the jury have leeway to award more punitive damages for Depp than Depp has asked for? Yes. Up to a limit. I think the limit in Virginia is 350,000. So up to the legal limit, they can award punitive damages. Uh, Those are the punishment ones. There's other types of damages that they can issue. If let me just talk about this real quick before I've got to get 
if the jury finds somebody liable, Heard or Depp, after the liability discernment or verdict, hey, this person defamed this person, then they'll get into testimony about the damages after that. So verdict, then damages, then damages award. Can the defense object during expert witness testimony? Yes, they can. Um, aren't experts exempt from the same thing that applies to typical witness? The Yes and no. So the style of questioning, yes, they can ask more leading questions. They can be allowed to, to kind of give these more narrative answers because they're an expert. But the same rules of evidence generally apply. So, I mean, there are there are some caveats to that, like hearsay. Um, doctors can rely on things they're told by others for the purposes of making an opinion. It's not to offer the truth of what the person said. It's the effect in making the opinion. So there are some quirks to the rules of evidence about the, um, about the expert testimony, but they can still object to things that are improper. There's not really any need to with a good expert because they know what they can and can't say. Mike drop, perhaps Amber heard, excuse me, claimed PTSD, SV and DV, et cetera, for public sympathy and, and financial gain. I mean, she did talk about being the center of attention, and that might also make the statement true that neither party made anything up for financial gain. When you look at that joint statement, it might be that she was um, making something up not for financial gain, but for attention. That could be an argument that Johnny Depp's team makes. Can you comment on how this would affect pro-con the case and potential settlements? Well, there's not going to be any settlements at this point. Um, this goes to whether or not Amber Heard is lying and whether or not it's defamatory. And since Johnny Depp didn't lie, it was his attorney that made statements and his attorney made statements that Amber Heard was lying. The whole point of this case is did Amber Heard lie about being a victim? And this goes to explain it. No matter what, it must have been hard to have your doctor testify in a way that can feel against you. This was not her doctor. This was the doctor that evaluated her. Who pays for the witnesses travel? The party that called them generally, sometimes the court in limited circumstances. Can Johnny go back and sue the son now? No. You rock. Thanks from Kat. You're welcome, Kat. No, that is done and dusted and was decided differently. And in my breakdown of this case, I do a brief breakdown of the differences between the two that's on this channel for you. Can we expect a different personal? Can we expect a different personal with conflicting test results from the defense? Oh, a different person. Also, can we expect this to help the herd case um, like an insanity plea? Well, no option for an insanity plea like in criminal options for a C. She did, she believed her own statements. So there's no defamation, but yes, there can be an expert coming in for Amber to contradict this. Absolutely. You can have um, competing experts or a battle of the two experts and the jury will have to decide who they believe. And, and not only will they have to decide who they believe, but they will also have to give weight to them. And this expert testified very well. So if Heard has an expert, that expert needs to also testify very well. Love watching your feedback and knowledge. Thank you. We gave a shout out to Sky Death. So yes. Hi, Sky. So glad the jury public has insight, but someone with borderline, I'm very scared of how people will be discussing it. I mean, the internet's not always sensitive. It's already extremely stigmatized and I hope this won't make it worse. I hope so too. Um, when in a lawsuit, how does someone get the plaintiff to meet with a therapist like this? It's through legal filings and the court orders it. And it has to be relative to something that's at issue in the case, but that's through legal filings. Good to see you. Um, Frog Nation said, why does Disney and Warner Brothers sympathize with Amber? I have no idea. Um, I don't know. It, it might've been court of public opinion. It might've been external pressure. I'm not sure. Um, good day, my spiffy legal mumbo jumbo talkie friend. Good day. Good to see you, Matt. I'm almost done, I swear. I know, I know, I, I know we have to go to the airport. I know, I'm almost done. I promise we only have a few more. I'm almost done. No more super chats y'all. Cause I don't even know if I'm going to finish all these. Dr. B is like, what is happening? He's, he came in and gave me, he's like trying to play me off. He gave me the wrap up. So we're going to, we're going to go as quickly as we can. Thank you to everyone for your support. We're going to, we're going to speed round. We're going to speed run. Not like dream. We're going to speed run like true speed run this or <laughs> question. Um, why do I have the feeling that her lawyers planned out her outfits? They might've been and planned her, um, her all over persona so that they, the jury would give her sympathy and blame her mental health, not her. I mean, it's possible. Um, I meant defendant. Hopefully the same answer still stands, but it's through court ordered process. Um, Taylor said, Hey, Emily, I really appreciate your commentary. I've been bothering my dad. He's an attorney. Uh, the last couple of weeks asking him about legal jargon. He's <laughs> very happy. I found you to explain. <laughs> You're welcome. I hear that a lot. Couch, couch, couch. I mean, Karen, Karen, Karen. Thank you, Matt. 
Question, will she testify the same manner but about depth? No, because we already addressed that. Thank you for the super stickers. Darla said, have you ever seen cases turn around after how well Johnny Depp's team did? Yes. Is there a chance for things to crumble? Hopefully that makes sense. There's always a chance for the defense to rebut it in their case in chief. That's why we have to listen until the end. And the jury is told not to make any decision about the case until the close of evidence and to keep an open mind because you never know. Thank you, Casey, for the congratulations. Can a jury ask to see the makeup palette? No. If the jury is all men, then hearing women being attacked may be a turnoff. No, they can't unless it's admitted into evidence, but there will need to be. I think we're going to see a makeup artist. Is believing the jury isn't on Twitter realistic? Yes. Juries tend to take the, that very seriously. Can the lawyer referring to this makeup be considered as Amber Heard lying? No. It. I have a video about that. It gives room for the defense or it gives room for Johnny Depp's team to argue. Um, it's not really Amber Heard's fault, but it can be attributed to her by the jury. So I have a breakdown of that on the quick bits. If Amber Heard testifies about how she used the makeup palette, can she be charged for perjury since it didn't exist? It depends on what she says. And I can evaluate that after she talks about it, she's probably going to say a palette like this one, but no, she will have to have some explanation. And there's a long road to get to a, a actual perjury issue. Um, do the jury deliberate on each case separately? No. And do they deliberate on each witness, deliberate on each when each are done? They do everything at the end. So after closing closing arguments, that's when they start deliberations. Johnny has spent millions to have his side heard. Yes, others just have to accept the consequences of liars. Um, we'll see what happens with this. But yes, he has spent millions to be heard. Um, Daphne, longtime watcher, first time member. Thank you. Love your commentary and sass sending love. Thank you so much. Can the... Doctor's testimony proved the defamation. I think it it can help or hurt depending on what happens next. Um, thank you for the support on the TED Talk. It is, I like my TED Talk. Uh, we're watching War of the Roses. Sherman's mom, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly what we're doing. If JD wins, what could be the possible outcomes? I talked about the probable outcomes yesterday, but if he wins, they can award him an amount of money Amber Heard would necessarily lose. I don't know how that'll happen. I don't know what that would change work-wise for him. Um, Mineski, thank you. You're so entertaining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. New member. Welcome. 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 Thank you for the comments. Um, I think Amber Heard's team came from Wish. She has some smart lawyers. They're just, I mean, they're not, I don't think they're seasoned trial lawyers. Why did Amber agree to examination with this psychologist? Because the court ordered her to. She did not have a choice. Does Amber Heard have her own psychologist? They have one on the witness list. We'll see if they testify. Can a lawyer's style be indicative of their client? Not really. Um, Amber Heard's being aggressive. The thing is, will a jury take it that way? Maybe. So it's not, I mean, it's not necessarily indicative, but a jury could attribute that to her. And that's why you have to be cautious. Um, I would have loved to see Johnny Depp's during testimony too, but they, that they were locked and loaded on the doctor. Um, do you feel he has a good chance of winning this? I still think defamation's hard in this case. I think he's going to win the court of public opinion but I still think defamation can be hard. But I think this expert goes a long way in saying making this up is something she would do. Is the jury allowed to show facial expressions during trial? They're generally advised to kind of keep it neutral. Um, or are they given explanations of terms used? No, they're not. Or are they allowed to ask questions? No, they're not. Who do they go to to ask questions? If they have an issue, they normally send a note to the court bailiff or the court clerk. Um, thank you so much for the super chats. No, Johnny didn't have an evaluation and won't. The alley manager was reading notes while testifying. I didn't see her reading notes and know she shouldn't have been looking at anything while testifying. So I didn't see her reading notes, but she shouldn't have had any materials. And if she did need things to refresh her recollection, she the attorneys would have had to offer that to her. If Amber loses, will she have to pay Depp's legal fees uh, if it's ordered by the jury? Thank you for the super sticker. I think first SC was missed. No big deal. I, it might have been there. Thank you. Um, if the judge was ruling not a jury trial, um, would the judge get the same evidence witness testimony? Yes. A bench trial here. Yes. Thank you so much. Do you think JD's won the heart of the public so far? I think so. Just based on what I'm seeing on social media and the responses I'm getting to my content. Do you think Amber's attorney was so pissed at her about the pallet? Maybe. Also, wouldn't an attorney do some research? Not necessarily. Um, not if you believe your client and you didn't double check what they said. But again, this goes to belief. Um, Good to see you, Fupa Trooper, Hungry Helmet. Um, it depends on how much they believe their client. And you have to believe your client, but verify. Like, trust, but verify. 
As a truck driver, I love listening to live streams while working. Thank you. You're welcome, Cody. Drive safe. Thank you for what you do. Question Amber Heard's friend Raquel reported Amber Heard slapping her. Will that be considered as evidence um, or would she be needed to testify? I don't know if Raquel's going to testify, but the doctor used it as part of this diagnosis. So we have that information. Um, Umber just style keeps reminding me that Amber's communication was compared to a jackhammer. Yep. And I might remind the jury of that too. What guidelines does the jury have to decide defamation? We'll go over the jury instructions when they come out publicly, they will get jury instructions and they'll be extensive and they'll probably live stream the judge reading them all. Uh, is it ethical to discuss Amber Heard's mental health in detail in this circumstance in court? Yes. My dad had BPD and although his behavior was egregious, it's certainly not under his control. Some people being insensitive. I don't doubt that in a chat with over 23,000 people that some are not super sensitive. Um, and we try our best to kind of rein that in. Love the show learning so much. You're welcome. I will have a safe trip. My husband is ready to like just that. I can tell my husband it has a name, time blindness. Thank you. You're welcome. It does have a name. Isn't that so helpful when you're like, holy shit, it's a thing. It's not just me. It's a thing. It's so fucking helpful. Question not related to the case. How long do DUIs stay on your record and do they ever come off? It, it depends on the state and it depends on for what purpose. And that's about as far as I can go without more information. Um, Tokyo Gouda said, shout outs from an H3 fan. Thank you. Emily, what is some of your advice for studying for the LSAT? Haley, that is a great question for another day, unfortunately. Um, my advice to studying for the LSAT is have a schedule, move your body, eat well, stay hydrated, don't sacrifice sleep ever. There, we did it quickly. I'm reminding you to pack. I know I'm going. <laughs> so glad I found your channel. Thank you. Me too. I'm glad you're here. Island Keeper sounds like a Scooby-Doo villain. I mean, the Island Keeper. It does. It does. I was just watching and I'm going to watch again when I get back on the plane. Um, cause I love the Spider-Man movies, but Spider-Man no way home. And you know, Dr. Strange who I love. I have a Dr. Strange tattoo, Dr. Strange being like, can you just Scooby do this shit? I died. The gentleman sitting next to me was like probably more so when I started crying during that movie, but whatever. Uh, thank you so much for the compliments. I appreciate it. I cannot wait to have a lovely sit down dinner tonight. A forensic eval done by a psychologist in a court is not therapy. Correct. 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 It is not. It is evidence. Imagine there's a bit of Amber has of Johnny abusing her. No. Um, if there is, it'll come out on her side. So I'm an MD. And to answer your question, yes, we do diagnose people as we meet them or see them. It's just a habit. I imagine that's, I, this is why I want to watch cross. I want to watch the interplay between the two. Like I'm like ready to rumble pack bag airport now. Okay. <laughs> pack bag airport. Now I will be watching cross. Um, but I will not be streaming it because I will be on a plane. I will be in legal bites as chat. Go get her channel to a hundred K. Rakeda is also streaming. Um, the lead attorney is also streaming. There are lots of people streaming. Oh my God, chat. You are so lovely. Lonards. I love you. Thank you. Y'all are the best. I'm going to miss you. Um, I will be on social media at the Emily D Baker on Twitter on Instagram, on TikTok, sharing my thoughts. You are welcome to join the community. I will be doing some behind the scenes of not just last week that I need to share, but where I've been because I did get to go hang out with some other attorneys that I will be sharing. I've not shared it publicly because it always, when I hang out with this one attorney, it always makes things spicy on the internet. So I'll be sharing that in our members only spaces and our mods. A huge thank you to them. Tell them to get some rest. Mods, get some rest. Thank you. I can't believe we are well past 227, rounding to 228,000 subscribers. You are the best. Thank you. I'm going to go get on a plane now. I appreciate you. I will see you around social. I'm bringing my streaming stuff with me in case shit pops off, but I'm going to try to just be where I'm at. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a Lonard. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I will see you around the internet this week. And I will, depending on the testimony, either be back streaming on Monday or streaming on Tuesday during our coffee and cursey words time. Bye, 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 bye. May the odds be ever in your favor. Oh, new episode of The Emily Show tomorrow. It'll be up on the channel. I'm going to try to premiere it so I can chat with you. Okay, bye. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.